What's up, everybody? Welcome to Flagrant 2. It's your boy, Shul Tim, here with Akash Sam. We got yep. Mark Gagnon. What's up? We got White Alex. We have... <laughs> uh, you thought I wasn't going to do that this yeah, time. Yeah, wow. We have White Alex, and then we have Dove the Truffle. Happy Hanukkah. Let's get right into it. Um, we had a good day, everybody. We're not on the road this weekend. Good weekend? I was yeah, on the road. Good? Okay, very good. We got in with our families and Thanksgiving and all that other stuff. Nobody cares. Let's uh, <laughs> let's get right into it. Um, I have a personal story I'd like to share. Oh, okay, what's up? Me with too. You guys. Okay, good. You have a personal story? Yeah, yeah. Okay, no one gives a fuck. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I have a personal story. Yeah, you can tell us about the ballet? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, no, no, this is before the ballet. This is very. This is why I ended up going to the ballet. Okay. Um, I uh, I was a victim of Peloton. I almost died on a Peloton oh, on the treadmill. Really? I understand how it kills the kids. I fell off the treadmill. I, I literally like in a fucking TikTok. <laughs> I, I'm running my the sneakers that Dove has on right now. Give me one of those sneakers. Just take it off real quick. Yeah, your little ninja right foot. Here. They fold too easy like that. Uh-huh. Okay? My toe caught the treadmill. There's a death treadmill from these Peloton, <laughs> this horrible company, Peloton, that you can sell your stock on, on public right now, yeah. PLPN or something. <laughs> and uh, it caught the front of it. Yeah. It bent over. My girl and I are both doing a workout class with Adrian oh, Williams or Wilson or whatever his name on Peloton. I okay. like the guys that work for them. Great guys. And Are uh, you in a public gym or are you at your no, place? No, this is out of, thank God. Yeah. This is downstairs. I catch the front of it and it all happens so fast. Okay? <laughs> I catch my toe in the front of it. Immediately, both of my legs are gone and I'm holding on with one, one arm. Okay? I'm holding on with one arm. The treadmill is just rubbing up and down my shins, just yeah. slowly wearing away the skin on my shins, right? I'm like, fuck, I got to do something. I got to let go or this thing's going to swallow me up. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I let go, <laughs> slams me against the wall. This is wave pool, wave pool wall. part two. So, wave pool part two, but it's so fast, right? Everything happened in one instance. Stub toe, ah, oh, fuck, I stubbed my toe. Boom, 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 <laughs> boom, slam against the wall, right? Immediately, I'm like, this could not get any worse. Oh, Immediately, man. I just hear, babe, are you okay? Boom, 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 <laughs> slam against the wall. My girl, my girl, my girl turns. My girl turns to see if I'm okay. As she's looking to see if I'm okay, she also turns, flip, slam against the wall. Both of us are there. We go to the ballet that night to make up for it. That's how it works. Yeah, what? because you almost killed your wife, Doug. Yeah, it was crazy. But I could see how it swallowed up kids. You go, there's no, I don't know, like, you know, sometimes the end, the end of treadmills doesn't also feel like, uh, it kind of like raises There's up a little a, lip at the yeah, end. Yeah, yeah, It feels like that, right? Yeah, there okay. should be. This is no lip. It's lipless. It's lipless. It's a white woman of treadmills. Yes, what? <laughs> what? It's Hold on one second. Hold on one second. That's a good, that's a good point, lip. actually. They aren't thin lip. Pelotons are white women's treadmills, too. They that's like, yeah. Oh, my God. That was genius. You're insulting my people, but that was genius. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so, so this fucking thing doesn't have any lip. You don't know when you're at the end. Yeah. I stubbed my toe. I'm fucking gone. I couldn't grab the side one. I just grabbed this one. It was like you're hanging on the end of a boat. You know those people? Yeah. Like, they fall off the uh, the, the water the water ski. Yeah, yeah. What is it called? Water ski? Yeah, water ski. Yeah, yeah. when they barefoot ski. Barefoot ski. Yeah. But I was just doing that and having all of my shins just slowly like wear Just away. your legs wrapping around three times. 100%. But I see how it could stuff a baby underneath and then they die. Yeah. Well, this thing is dangerous. Yeah. But so how long were you running out of before three you Three minutes. <laughs> I, I went right on my first incline. They're like, take the incline up two points. And I was like, I'm taking up three easy. points. Uh, easy. <laughs> this shit is an intermediate class. I'm advanced. Yeah. Right? I took that shit up three points and then it told me to speed up the thing, hit my toe, vip, 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 boom, slam. My girl, you okay? Vip, 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 boom, slam. <laughs> Both of us. What do the teacher do? Say again. What do the teacher do? He stopped the it's class. It's not live. It's not live. Oh. <laughs> you think the guys on the screen like, what yeah, the yeah, fuck yeah, just yeah, happened yeah. to both of you guys? Thirty thousand people watching. They just gotta stop there. Yeah. I don't know how to walk. Yeah, off. there were two headshots in the middle <laughs> of the class. <laughs> so yeah, so that's why we we're at the ballet. And did you guys bounce back? Or were you like, all right, let's finish yeah, it up? Went right back on. Let's do another three day. more minutes. Yeah, I, I mean, it was embarrassing. She was like holding me like something. <laughs> Like I just got fucking raped or something like that. Like she's literally like holding me. Andrew, you okay? Is everything okay? But she like, fell too. I'm like, you hit the wall too. <laughs> what the fuck you holding me for? No. You know what I mean? Back off. <laughs> Are you okay? Dumbass. Can't even fucking run, walk. How, how much must you have been complaining for her to be like, I gotta comfort this guy? No, no, it wasn't. She was like genuinely concerned. And then, you know, she just looked like an idiot. Dude, who falls off a treadmill, right? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my weekend, and then we went to the stupid ballet. Okay. And wait, why did you go to the ballet? Nah, nah, we had book tickets to go to the ballet. My my girl used to be a ballerina, and she likes those things. And uh, it's just uh, stupid. It's the worst, dog. <laughs> I, I, it's the worst. We saw the Nutcracker. I'll say this. I saw that shit. I think. Okay, maybe I saw now, one ballet. Here's the thing: the Nutcracker. The second half, you can appreciate the athletic prowess that it mm -hmm. takes to do these things. The first half of the ballet of the Nutcracker is absolutely stupid. It's yeah. idiotic. Yeah, it makes yeah. no sense. They're not speaking and they're not dancing. Right, right. So it's just waste your time. 
What are they doing? They're at the, they're at the dinner party. What do you mean it's not a waste? It's not even a dinner party. They're giving presents, but they're just walking around. There's no dancing, and they're not speaking. So it's just it's just like uh, one of those movies back in the day before Silent audio. Film. It's a silent film. But I'm not coming for a silent it's film. It's unfunny Charlie Chaplin. Bro. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's a story. No jokes, nothing. It's a story. It's stupid. The rats come, then the rat king is there. They shoot it with the, the fucking sword fight. It makes no sense. The second part with the dancing, the racism, that's Yeah, fine. that's just mad racist. No one ever talks about that. Super racist. Nutcracker's super racist. Super racist. And How do know- Asian people dance? Ooh, ho, 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 ho. Like, <laughs> they do this. <laughs> they do this. How do, how do Arab people dance? It was fun. <laughs> they yeah. do this shit? Uh, no, I don't know. And then they have the Russians. That's, that one's fire, too. Well, yeah. Yeah. I didn't see it's Nutcracker. Russian. I dead yeah, ass yeah. thought every ballet was Nutcracker until you said what happened in yours. I was like, wait, I think mine is different. Yeah, there's other ones. What about you guys? Anything fun this weekend? Yeah, I went to Tennessee and I want a gun. Oh, really? I wait, want a gun. Why did you shoot it? Why did you go no, to Tennessee? No, no, no. I was meeting up with an old friend. And uh, you did shows in Nashville. I had Tennessee. shows uh, in Nashville. Thank you to everybody who came out. Sold out both nights. Yeah, had baby. A lot of fun. Um, and then I was meeting up with an old friend, and he's kind of a wild boy. And I, I see him when I meet him. I'm like, he gained weight. What's going on? And then he casually mentioned having weapons or something. So we get to the hotel. I'm like, let me see the guns. He pulls out uh, Walter something, PP something. I don't know. Yeah. But he got three fucking clips. First of all, he pulls out three knives. And I'm like, this guy is ready for war. Yeah. Then he pulls out the handgun. And I'm like, unload the shit, take out every bullet possible, and then let me hold it. Because yeah. I don't trust myself with a loaded gun, obviously. Yeah. I hold the gun. And I'm like, oh, this is kind of cool. But then the motherfucker had like a sight on it, yeah. like a scope, like an infrared. And as soon as I looked through the, the viewfinder thing or whatever, and I saw the red light, I was like, I want a gun. I will kill everybody, dog. Really? This shit is so fire. Yeah. Oh, yeah. dude. You take a look at that fucking sight on a handgun. Break it out of here. It was light. I can carry that around. I can't believe you're from Texas. You never held a gun. I held a fucking M16 or whatever one time yeah. on a farm. Big ass gun. Yeah. That shit weighs more than me. I'm yeah. too weak to have a gun like that. Yeah. I know a, a little nice handgun. I could have that. Give me, just the a... same pistol that you give Carmen <laughs> oh, San Diego. No, give me that shit. You're just like a late blooming incel, I think. Yeah. <laughs> like you in your whole 20s, you're like, man, yeah, yeah, respect yeah. everyone. Now you're like approaching 40, you're like, yo. I don't think you knew I me in my gun. 20s if you think I respected <laughs> everyone in my 20s. Who's this, uh, this friend that had three knives and the guns? What's the whole deal? And why reference his weight gain? Like, what is He didn't. We didn't gain. Weight. He, he just actually had just had weapon. fucking guns and clips in his waist. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. for what? Like you asked him to bring the guns over. I'm trying to. No, no. Why he he had just all these guns. he just has this at all times. You weren't concerned. Was there a Black Lives Matter march or something in the neighborhood? <laughs> no, no, no. He was a black dude. So I was just like, well, he's from he's from Nashville, so probably just you know right. he's been around some shit. So whatever. I'm a sheltered guy, but I'm not gonna ask questions. I don't care. Yeah, but he had three clips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was. What a was he gonna be around? That, that son. Who knows? You need multiple. Yeah, of those gun clips. people love. The more guns, the is better. Is he a gun person or is he like a gang member? I think. And I'm only asking that because you said he's black. <laughs> if you I said think... he was anything else, I wouldn't ask that. Isn't that fucked up? Because yeah. if you said to me he's like he's white, I'd be like, oh, this guy's in a militia or something. He's like, yeah. a, which is also a white gang. That's a white gang. That's white gang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was funny. He was telling yeah. us about some shit he got into in high school. He was like, yeah, in Nashville we had these things called high school fraternities, and he described the oh, fraternities yeah, yeah, like we would beef with other fraternities, yeah. and he's like explaining it to Tushar, and Tushar goes, yes, yes, I'm familiar with gangs. Yeah. <laughs> Like I, I know it's yeah, yeah, yeah. actually this is. But that's great rebranding. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but yeah, 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 I th- yeah, think he did some wild shit, and now he's out of it, but he still loves his guns. You know yeah. what I mean? He still loves fucking toting shit around. Three clips. This guy ready for war at all times. How do you know this guy? You went to school together or something? Yeah. I don't, yeah High school just, fraternity. Yeah, we just ran into each other. In L.A., we got cool, actually. Oh, you guys knew each other in L.A.? Yeah, yeah. Got you, got yeah. you. Okay. But then he obviously left during the pandemic, and now he just got his own house, and he was just like, I'm going to take you shooting. And I didn't want to go until it was too late. When I held the gun, I was like, fuck, I wish I was shooting, yo. Mm, do I know this guy? You might. I'll tell you the name of the podcast. It used to be a comic? Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you the name of the podcast. Yeah, yeah. I know who this guy is. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Funny guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah good guy. That's yeah, my guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. All right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. can say it. What does it say his name? But then I won't it. say it. Okay. Uh, we're going to beep it? Yeah. 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 Yeah, was, yeah. 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 That makes perfect sense. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. All right. Shouts to him, man. Okay. What else? Anybody else? Mark, you have a good weekend? I had a great weekend. Mm-hmm. I just hung out and read this book about Jeff Bezos. I'm okay. I'm all in on Bezos. You like him? I'm, I'm a huge fan. Why? Uh, he's just a, might be a genius. Might be the biggest genius of all time. Really? I mean, I don't know. I'm reading like a super biased book about why he's great. And I'm like, yeah, yeah it makes sense. Why, yeah. why is he genius? 
it just produced by Amazon Books. Yeah, yeah. You I got read it, it on, on my Kindle. Kindle. I read yeah. it on my Kindle. That keeps on breaking. I've <laughs> yeah. had like three kin- broken Kindles. We and I'm think just, you might like this. Yeah. yeah, and I did, and I really did. And why? It just it just like uh, breaks down how he became a billionaire and how yeah. he started the business and yeah. why he's good at it. Yeah, and like he really cares about customers and wants people to be happy, but also just fucks over his employees a little bit. Yeah, and it's like yeah, you can't really have both. Just a little bit is fine. A tasteful amount of fucking your employees. Yeah. <laughs> but I've heard it's not. I've heard it's beyond. Tasteful. Refused to like put in air conditioning units in the warehouses and stuff, but had like an ambulance outside just in case people passed out from heat stroke. That's cheaper. Cheaper. Yeah. yeah. So it's like you can have a great product, happy employees, or happy customers. And you can only have two. What if you could have all three? <laughs> in and out. Oh, yeah. I guess maybe they're happy. And mm. it's a good product. Pay the employees well. Costco. Everybody always brags about how great they're paid. Patagonia. Food is fire, right? And... The customer is treated well. Yeah. And I think it's just because they're honest about it. They're like, don't hang out for a while. You're in and out. Like, we are telling you exactly what we want from you. The secret, you got to be Christian. That's, That's it. That's it. That's Chick-fil-A. it. Without the Chick-fil-A. religious. Chick-fil-A. <laughs> Chick-fil-A. Same thing. Oh, my God. The people are so nice every time you go into Chick-fil-A. Dude, yeah. yeah. It's incredible. They're you the need Christianity. Costco is the other one. Costco, everyone loves Costco. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, the employees that work there, if you look at their little badge, it's like, worked here since 1998. Christian? Actually, I don't know. But yeah. he's just like a super nice guy. Patagonia, like, apparently. They're margins. not Christian, though, I don't think. I think they're liberal cucks. But yeah. it's like employees can take vacations whenever they want to. You don't have an assigned time. You don't even really have to tell people with that much notice. Just go. He said, like, he founded the idea with you should always just be able to go surfing whenever you want to. Because he was a surfer. Great book. Great book. Oh, the Patagonia? Yeah, guy? Let My People Surf or something like that. Yeah. Is, uh, is the book. But then, uh, but then you just cut into your margins. That's basically all. That's what you can do. Yeah, but how much do you need to make? Bezos got enough, right? He could cut in his margins a bit now. That's crazy. He said no air conditionings, but put an ambulance outside just in case. And again, it's like maybe not him, but it's the fulfillment managers, blah, blah, blah. But You have yeah. not brought up any points about why he's great, and the one point that you said was kind of <laughs> fucked up is actually Super uh, up. atrocious. It's like, uh, yeah, really inhumane. Yeah, I mean, he's just like kind of brilliant, understands every facet of the business, like obsessive worker, and is willing to like go all out, hyper competitive, mm-hmm. and uh, extremely big dreamer and is like no we're gonna create the store that has everything we're gonna have the library that has every book i agree with all in a time when it was like oh you can't sell everything like he went up against borders and like barnes and noble when they were like dominating books and he came in with no experience it was like yeah we're gonna be we're gonna beat them but i'm not even looking at them i'm looking at walmart i'm looking at sears and he was just like people would laugh at him like what are you talking about like sell everything it makes no sense i always love that guy that everybody laughs at and then he fucking (laughs) does it all and then does it all and just goes for it yeah, he got he got to have something. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, he got something. He just doesn't have anything cool. He just nah. that's why nobody respects him like they respected like fucking Jobs or or uh, Elon. Mm. It's yeah, because you want the gadgets. Yeah, he you want he Batman. Always respect gadgets. You want like, Batman. F- same thing with Bill Gates. It's like I don't know what you did, buddy. Like yeah. you try to make the Microsoft store it just looks like a bootleg Apple store. Yeah, give me the gadgets. Yeah, and I think that Amazon. You know, maybe he's going into the space stuff so he can start making a gadget. But even when he started to make the gadget, trash. He always loved space. That's the other part. Yeah. He was like right in high school. He's like, yo, we're going to live in space. Earth yo, is going to be a little visiting spot. Can I keep it a buck? Please. I would love for you to. I would love to keep it a buck on the Flagrant 2 podcast. Yeah, please do that. That's space shit. <laughs> Go. It's Go. mad selfish, yo. Why? I don't mind selfishness, but just keep it real with me. Stop acting like you care about the future generations of the world. Da, 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 da. It's like if you really cared about humanity, there's so many things you could do right now to help humanity. On Earth. On Earth. Like you could find a way like uh, the desalination process. Make that more efficient, Elon. Make that more efficient, Jeff. Like right. there are so many better ways where you could help humanity. Mm-hmm. And going to Mars is not one of them. Right. Starting these space colonies is not one of them. We all know that the world is not over in 50 years. Right. It's not over in 100 years. It's not over in 200 fucking years or whatever these scientists fucking say. Okay, obviously we now know the scientists are willing to say anything if the people that are giving them enough money uh, are willing to uh, agree with what they're saying. But the point I'm trying to make is just be honest. This is your toy. If it's your toy and you want to play with your toy and it costs a billion dollars, that's fine. Do your thing. You made the money. Do with it. But stop selling us on this, like, we have to do this for the future generations. You saw spaceships as a kid. You think it's really cool. You made enough money to have a fucking spaceship. Then you go do it. That's what it is. Mm. You're not doing this for me. Yeah. Okay. This, 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 okay. This, this, this is pure selfishness. There's no altruism in space travel. But what if, they, what if they look at the world and they go, yo, we're going to be overpopulated? 
We're not. <laughs> We're not overpopulated. Well, this is the one thing I push back on. You said scientists will do anything if they get money. They might be, but don't you think they will get more money from like the fucking oil and gas company and any other company that wants to s- bypass EPA regulation? They would pay a scientist way more to say shit like, ah, hey, global warming's not real. They do, and they take that shit all the time. Yeah, they bet. but there's also a lot or who are saying this is a big problem. So who's paying them? Who? The, the scientists that are saying it's a big problem. The earth in trouble. They're just being annoying. They're comics. <laughs> <laughs> That's all they are. They're just comics going like, I'm going to have an alternative take. Or they're, you know I mean? or they're, they're just you. us. <laughs> yeah, they're just fucking us. They're annoying us. You don't think that we annoy the people in government? You don't think we annoy the CIA? You don't think we annoy the FBI? When we start talking about this Ghislaine trial, we start saying all this shit, you don't think they're going to roll their fucking eyes? Yo, shut the FBI up, motherfucker. Right? Like, why, yes. why are you guys yapping all the time about yes. Ghislaine? They got motherfuckers assigned to our podcast just to listen to our yeah, shit. Yeah, there's the FBI. FBI agents on my Boom. computer trying to look at me. Listen, watch it. Uh-huh. They're annoyed. Oh, fuck. Here they go. Back to work. I gotta pay attention <laughs> to these sons of bitches. Okay? All I'm trying oh to say is God. be honest. You got your little thing that you like mm-hmm. and that you want to spend billions of dollars on it. That's fine. Yeah. But stop acting like you're doing it for the greater good of civilization. How do you know we're not gonna be overpopulated? Because I know. How do you know? Because China doing all right. <laughs> but they're mad overpopulated. They're not, no, they're not. They got cities they got to shut down. The How, Chinese they government. They cities. They don't got enough people to go in them, so they're shutting them down. They they're blowing down up the buildings city. in China because there's not enough Chinese people. <laughs> Figure it out, <laughs> China. It's facts, though. Yeah, they built 100%. Cities. They built these fucking cities out, and they realize, oh, there's not enough Chinese people. Uh, shocking. World gets better. People start fucking or stop fucking. <laughs> right? It's immediately what happens. Once there's opportunities for you to do something in life, you don't fuck. That's why we have negative population in, uh, what is it, Norway, Sweden, all those places? Every place with feminism. So wait, hold on. Right Every now, you're literally feminism. saying that less population is better, and then you're... And you I never said to, it's better. I said it's what's happening. Yeah, but you said it solves problems. You said... Solve the problem. What, what a shock. We stop fucking. Everything you gets want, better. You want to solve the problem of the world? What is the world problem right now? Overpopulation? Overpopulation. Okay. But you can't Who's get people to stop fucking. Who's overpopulated? India. 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 Give women rights. <laughs> you won't do it. Give women rights in India. Yeah, yeah. Guaranteed. Okay. You'll, that overpopulation shit, gone. <laughs> gone. Let women not get raped when they walk home. <laughs> Guaranteed. Yeah. Guaranteed. Yeah. Your issues of overpopulation in India, gone. But y'all don't want to do it. So yeah. you should be overpopulated. Figure okay. it out. But you just said overpopulation is not an issue. You deserve overpopulation because over, you won't get women But you're saying it's not rights. an issue. You're saying it's not an issue. Your whole point is overpopulation is not an issue. No, 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 no. Let me think about this. Yo, no, no, no. Yo, no, don't let them get you, Andrew. Don't let them get you, Don't let them get you, into a loop. No, no. Overpopulation is not an issue. Okay, now start the argument <laughs> over again. It's not because you just looped again. We're not overpopulated in America. Bro, he's on a Peloton right now. He's going around and around. He's sucked in the... Tra- he didn't, he's he didn't hit the around. fucking wall. <laughs> I'm <laughs> looking at him. I'm tripping. Let me, let me, let me uh, clarify what I'm trying to say. Overpopulation is not real. We're not overpopulated in America. Maybe you're overpopulated in India, but all you need to do is give women rights and all of a sudden they stop wanting to have 15 fucking babies. Mm-hmm. Simple as that. Yeah. That's it, okay? Yeah. You let the Hasidic Jews do something besides take the fucking city bike over to Williamsburg Bridge, <laughs> I guarantee that the women there, yeah. I guarantee the women will stop having 15 fucking kids. Yeah. I guarantee any population of women that's having 15 kids, no education, Any country no, with more gender equality, they're having less kids. That's it. No, I I've actually read that. that. You want to yeah. stop the human race? Give women rights. <laughs> it's very simple. You want to stop yeah. humanity? Yeah. Give women rights yeah. and take away men's rights. <laughs> Where it's flip flop Portland Are there any people there? No <laughs> They're gonna explode the There's city There's no people in Portland Yeah but then There's homelessness no people in Portland Then homelessness becomes a problem Because men got nothing to work for Say what? Then homelessness becomes a problem Because men are like I ain't getting no fucking job Kill them <laughs> Kill them Fumigate the homeless Okay You just gotta fumigate Same thing we do to cockroaches Same thing that we do to all these other water bugs Do the same thing to the people of Portland Water bugs Just go through with that smoke thing Oh, the, go, the Ghostbusters. You yeah. haven't Ghostbusters. said yeah. your policies actually so far I've agreed with. That's what I'm saying. Gender Everybody equality, agrees. kill the homeless. I don't have a problem with either of these. Bezos, figure it out. <laughs> Bezos, just give women's rights mm. to all the places that don't have it. India, women's rights. Overpopulation solved. Give me another place with overpopulation. I don't know. I don't care about other countries. <laughs> it doesn't exist. What's another population? Overpopulation doesn't exist. It's a myth. I mean, probably Pakistan, like the whole subcontinent. I don't know. Pakistan, I don't know if it's overpopulated. <laughs> no Feminism, <clue>. very popular. <laughs> <laughs> very popular in Pakistan. Feminism is very popular. Uh, Facts. Is it popular because it's like one of those banned books where they don't allow it, so it so gets it more gets, popular? Yeah, more yeah, yeah. 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 The other yeah. thing with Bezos, I'll say, is that he's a great case for uh, adoption. 
Is he adopted? Oh, yeah. He was like sort of adopted. What is like, sort of adopted? Luck of the draw so adopted. he was married, like his mom had him and then was married to like kind of a deadbeat dude. And then he got, he was a unicyclist, weirdly. And then he went out of the picture. And then this new guy came in, Cuban dude, Bezos, and basically like adopted him. And he was like, yeah, I'll raise your kid with you. And then turned out to what be the richest man in the world. Great guy, dude. Lucky Good motherfucker, dude. right? <clears throat> but if you're That's like... That's just nice to see instant karma like that. Yeah. Just but a single, right single mom... A with himself and he was just like, am I really going to marry this fucking single mom? Got a whole <laughs> 100%. Bald ass kid, kid 14 years old, bald as 100%. fuck. 100%. Yeah, Never damn. shuts the fuck up, always pretend he knows everything. With his dreams and shit. We're going to live in space, shut the, the books fuck up, the world. kid. Yeah, yeah, I think it was just books at that time, but maybe it was dreams about space. Yeah, bro, he dreamed about everything, dog. That's what Mark was saying. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah, a great case for adoption. Stopping. Yeah, it is. It don't is. put like the ASPCA like in the arms of an angel with some kid crying in a cage. Like, mm. nah. Say, yo, you could be a billionaire. Yeah, and do it like that's a lotto great. commercial. Yeah, yeah. black like, people will be adopting kids everywhere. Yeah. Yo, son. Steve Jobs adopted. No, that ass adopted. Mm. You don't remember that movie when they he went to his dad's restaurant? I didn't watch that fucking movie. Come on. Adopted, bro. He was adopted. Steve Jobs. Adopted. Wow. Every billionaire's fucking adopted. Wow. Yeah, we got to get ourselves some kids. Think if somebody adopted Jay-Z, how lucky that guy would have been. Holy shit. Why? Was he in an orphanage? Jay-Z was fatherless. Or That's his dad wasn't in his life. But if somebody was did the same, Bezos wasn't in an orphanage. Uh, somebody white some was, guy like, that was like, oh, I don't want to marry him. a single but he mom. he couldn't because the mom was a lesbian. She was licking box. Well, some woman was like, yo, I don't want to marry this other woman right now. One that's illegal in yeah, the 90s. Yeah, so if a woman came through and married illegally Jay-Z's mom, then yeah. she could have been balling right now. <laughs> Just balling out, bro. Yeah, but these Old M.A. could have been rich. Facts, dude. Son, fucked dude, up. Old M.A. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm trying to say It's selfish And I'm okay with rich people Being selfish I don't like it When they put it on I don't like when they put Their selfishness out there Like they're trying to help The greater good That bothers Yeah they me. got that God complex though their, their whole thing I'm gonna save humanity And then you just gotta Make it align with The fact that you actually Just want You're power hungry and You wanna take over the world Yeah you, it has to, you have to think You're saving the world yeah. Fucking Hitler thought He was saving the world And making it a better place yeah. Now I'm not saying Bezos is Hitler But any guy that's power hungry And is thinking on that Grand of a scale Is gonna have to make it A humanitarian thing To cope that's the only way you can live with it. I would respect the fuck out of him if he was just like, yo, I got crazy bread right now, <laughs> yeah. and I got nothing to do, all right? I already got a, I divorced my wife, which was lit, made more money, got a new wife, Hispanic, uh. Uh. you know what I mean? <laughs> respect to my pops who fucking adopted me. Yeah. I just adopted a Spanish too. Uh. Yeah, yeah, this shit did. works out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's just following his stepdad's footsteps. Yeah, That's did. all he's doing. Yeah, he did. You know what I mean? Throw one up. Right? Yeah. For the right? Cubanos. Yeah. You know what I mean? So pick this girl out the fucking mud. Yeah. <laughs> Took that girl out the, out the mud. Cleaned her up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like one of them pelicans after the, the BP. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Here you go, little baby bird. Let me just wipe you down. Yeah. Right. Wiped right. her down real quick. Right. Made her a billionaire. Mm. Gave Shorty a check. Yep. Right? The ex. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Megan or whatever her name was. Mackenzie. Mm -hmm. Whatever. <laughs> she made her a billionaire. Just yep. making chicks billionaires left and right. He's he like, doing I've a done lot for women's rights, to... actually. That motherfucker does everything for women's rights. Yo. Honestly, he is the feminist of our times. Okay, then. How many more people <laughs> made women billionaires? How you make women feminists? Give them books, right? There you go. My mom wasn't a feminist until she started reading Anne Rand. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know that's true. If you met his Yo, mom, that shit makes so much sense. My mom was so reading Anne Bro, I don't even know who this bitch is. Yeah, but your mom I know does. she got a Y in her name. i never seen Anne spelled like that. <laughs> it's A-Y-N, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was Anne. Oh, it's and Rand. And Rand. And, and, and Rand, yeah. It's, it's Rand. just an ampersand with a Rand on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's an ampersand? It's an ampersand Rand. That's, That's the most feminist name. bitch in the world, bro. Yeah. <laughs> She's going... <laughs> Full name, ampersand Rand. Yeah, just bro. Well, and Rand got my mom thinking, bro. <laughs> yeah. Really? Is that short for Annie? He's like, nah, ampersand. That's ampersand. Short for Annie. Short for ampersand. <laughs> I'm just saying, Pam. Pam. <laughs> Pam. Is Pam Rand. Is Pam... <laughs> Pan, 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 You're saying pan. No, I'm saying pan. Okay. okay. It's pan shui. <laughs> <laughs> Leanne Chen. Yeah. I'm a tennis player. Yeah. I'm a tennis player. You think that happened in China? Like, pan shui is going missing. Pan? No, pan. Pan <laughs> Who's on first? <laughs> <laughs> what made you a feminist? What book was it? Say what? What made you a feminist? Bible. The Bible made Hell you a feminist? Hell yeah. Wait, why? Because, man, Bible's super lit if you're a woman. What do you mean? Because you can have you can have no, kids Jesus without just, giving birth. Jesus picked up this gutter slut from fucking Bethlehem, <laughs> dragging her around with the homies, getting a box. 
failed. Jesus. <laughs> no, I'm talking about Mary Maggles. Obviously. <laughs> oh, shit. We didn't think you were talking about Mary. Yeah, Virgin Mary's Mary. Mary's the l- most lit. Mary's... So how many ver- how many Marys in the Bible? They couldn't think of new names. Damn, yeah. there wasn't that many names back then. Yeah, there was bro. like six names. Yeah. What was the Virgin Mary? Everyone last in India's name Akash. What are you talking about names, dog? Yeah, dude. How many other Akash dumb, do you know? You fucking dumb brown I, I idiot. Two. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking fake Jew. Fuck you. <laughs> you undercover Jew. Yeah, you too. We, we don't want him. You too. Okay? It's fucking <laughs> undercover <me>. Jew. <laughs> On the second day of Hanukkah, my true love gave to me. Ooh. I had no idea. Okay. <laughs> do you guys know how that song goes? Uh, on the so. first day of Hanukkah, my, my landlord came to me. <laughs> <laughs> Two late deposits and a partridge in a pantry. pantry. <laughs> on the second day, day of Hanukkah, Hanukkah Great Britain, Britain came to me. A little Britain land in the Middle Britain East Britain is disputed. <laughs> and a partridge in a pear tree. tree. Yeah. On the third no, day a third of day. Hanukkah, my true we love gave to me <laughs> a little <laughs> more of the land in the Middle East says it's beautiful. Yeah, rolling occupation. Really and, a and a partridge <laughs> in a yeah. pear tree. That's probably good. On the fourth I day of the fourth Hanukkah, day. <laughs> the settlements increase. <laughs> <laughs> Five blue squares. <laughs> the Golan Heights. The oh, no, jobs. All of the hey guys, I want to give you all an update of what's going on with the uh, controversy over the infamous tour coming to Canada. Uh, this venue, uh, Massey Hall, iconic venue with a, a board of directors that are a bunch of bitch ass motherfuckers, wouldn't let us perform there. And uh, we decided to move the show elsewhere. And you know what else I decided? I decided that um, we need to have a Canadian leg of the infamous tour. Because it's not enough that we just perform three shows at Meridian Hall in Toronto. We need to spread our wings all throughout Canada because the great people of Canada deserve some inappropriate jokes. I think, matter of fact, they rather love them. So we are coming to Vancouver, Montreal, Winnipeg, Calgary. And you can get those tickets Right now, matter of fact, they're available on pre-sale starting at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time today. TheAndrewSchultz.com pre-sale code is Schultz, S-C-H-U-L-Z. Make sure you use that. We are coming. We are expanding. Infamous Store Canada is a real motherfucker thing. Uh, We will not be canceled. We will not be censored. We will just keep expanding. That is what it is. TheAndrewSchultz.com. We added more cities in uh, America as well. Make sure you go get those. TheAndrewSchultz.com. Akash, what you got? First of all, thank you to everybody who came out in Nashville. We sold out both shows and Zanies. It was fucking amazing. Thank you guys so much. Uh, upcoming shows, I'm going to be in Washington, D.C. next weekend at the Comedy Loft. Buy your fucking tickets before they sell out. January 7th and January 8th, I'm coming home to Dallas. Hyenas, I expect everybody I know at that goddamn show. Let's sell out the whole weekend. Uh, January 27th through 29th, I'm going to be at the Comedy Vault in Batavia, Illinois. This, and February 3rd and 4th, I'm going to be at the Sandman Comedy Club in Richmond. Also, we got some dates coming up in some major cities that you guys have been asking for for a long time. I will announce those probably next week. But in the meantime, get tickets to these shows at AkashSing.com. Now let's get back to the show. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second because i got to make sure that y'all are satiated. All right? This right here is the greatest water on the planet. It's liquid death. You've seen it. I know it looks like it's beer. It's not beer. Matter of fact, if you don't drink beer, if you don't drink anything, you're at the cookout, you want to hold something so you don't look like a square, it's liquid death. But let me tell you something about the water. The liquid death, this is specifically right here, the um, no bubbles. What is that called? Flat water? water? Flat, still, Natural. natural. It's the best I've ever had in my entire life. Okay, it is the best I've ever had in my entire life. It's my favorite water that is on the planet. The bubbles one is very good as well, but this is literally the best water I've ever had in my entire life. It stays nice and cold. It's not like those fucking water bottles. You get a water bottle, you can't even place it on a table. The bottoms are all crinkled and messed up because they start using the cheap plastic. Don't blame supply issues. It's cheap plastic. You guys are cheapening out. Liquid death, the can keeps it cold. Place it wherever the hell you want to place it. Crack that thing open and enjoy. And let me tell you right now, you get free shipping on all water and merch at liquiddeath.com slash flagrant. That's liquiddeath.com slash flagrant or grab some at Whole Foods, Sprouts, and 7-Eleven. Now let's get back to the show. Do you, hey, did you read what Ayn Rand said about uh, Israeli-Palestinian conflict? What'd she say? 
<laughs> Y'all don't know what Ann Brand said about <laughs> no, no, that. What you say? You never heard about that? What does Ann Brand say? say? What say? Yo, Ann Brand is a wild in bitch. Atlas yeah. Shrugged. <laughs> so my my mom was giving all sorts of pushback to my dad when she was reading Ann Brand. Oh no, she's women's ice bucket. I honestly don't know what those books are about. I just know my mom was getting saucy when she was reading those books. Oh really? What is it about? What is it's it? It's not even a feminist book. It's like an individual like. You libertarianism? are kind of yeah, like you can do anything yourself. Basically, you don't rely on big government. She hated big government. She came from like communist Russia. Really? Yeah, and she was just like, "Fuck the government." Basically, wow. mm-hmm. that's individual. She yeah. did leave my dad for about a year after that. <laughs> so maybe she was all about that do it on yourself shit. This yeah. is actually good then to she know. Did it for a year and was like, uh, you know what? You know what? Not worth it. Yeah, not I worth it. With these lonely ass old women. This is good to know. Actually, if my girl ever starts acting, I'll be like, "Yo, where is it?" Where is She's it? like, what are you talking about? I was like, your copy of Atlas Shrugged. Where is it? I know it's under your bed somewhere. Uh-huh. Show me where it is. Uh huh. Now, is Anne Rand married? Uh, I don't know. No chance. Lonely. Ain't nobody <laughs> marrying that headstrong ass bitch. You know what her real name is, though? What's that? Ampers- Alicia. No. Alicia? Alicia Rosenbaum. Oh, <laughs> my God. Wow. Do you have one? On the fifth <laughs> day of Hanukkah, my true love gave to me five single women crying on the. What? Park bench <laughs> about how happy they are in their um, freedom and how much that they don't miss their husbands because their lives are so much better now that they're lonely. Okay, a lot of singing. I know. Are you, I know. You good? Doug? No, I'm going through it, guys. I can be sad. Jordan I Peterson be, song. How that song goes? <laughs> I can be. Sad. Yo, that is that is funny you say Jordan Peterson because Jordan Peterson and Amran saying the same shit. And when when uh Jordan Peterson says it, dudes like kick their fucking drug habit, they get a job, <laughs> they get a car, they get a house. And when women do that shit, they become lonely, old, bitter, <laughs> fucking single bitches, bro. It's sad. Isn't that fucked up? We need a better um we need a better role model for women. <laughs> How can women be empowered? Believe in themselves, yeah. feel like they can achieve anything, yeah, yeah, yeah. while at the same time not be lonely and fifty years old by themselves. Mm. I do mean who's that. the model? Say so that's who's what I'm the saying. model. They might, need need a, they might need a man. Beyonce. <laughs> that's Beyonce. That's true. Beyonce. Yeah, Beyonce's married. She got kids. Married, she seems happy. Exactly. Kids. Beyonce married. Kids. Yeah. Got cheated on, dealt with it. Dealt with it. That's a good... <laughs> dealt with it. That's a good spokesperson, ladies. Dealt with that it. That was actually a good trade, I feel like. What's like, that? Jay-Z cheats. She makes a dope song. Like, they both kind of air it out, and then they're good. He made a whole album apologizing to this bitch. Come on, now. Yeah. That's enough. Seems yeah. like a fair trade. Yeah, you just called Beyonce uh, the B-word, dog. What, oh, a bae? Yeah. Damn, Beyonce? you called Beyonce the B-word. Yeah. Yeah. Start seeing some bees in your she's comment section. She's the queen bee. She's the queen bee. She Whoa. knows she's the queen Whoa. bee. Whoa, I like that. that she's the good. queen bee. That was good. Catch herself. She call right herself, there. bro. Anyway, yeah, I don't know if it's the best trade-off because I think she could sell records without being cheated on pretty well, she, but I hear what you're saying. But in it terms made of them money. Yeah. It did make them money. It does fucking suck because you're like, who do I have to look up to? Like, if you're a young girl, you're like, wait a minute, my dream is Beyonce. And then even Beyonce gets cheated on. Fuck. And you're like, oh, what if I was a powerful woman in politics? What if I was Hillary Clinton's? I would never get yeah, cheated on if I was Hillary Clinton. And, yeah. and then she was. And then she gets cheated on too. Yeah. Fuck. Oh, my God. There is one way that you won't get cheated on, ladies, or, or a way where you might not get cheated on as much. Hit it. And that is if you marry loser dudes that can't get no pussy. Mm. But do you want to be with a loser dude that can't get no pussy? That's the tricky thing. If you want to be around the desired dude, you and then run imagine, the risk of that desire being acted on. There's a lot of loser dudes who still cheat. Now imagine that. Oh, you with a loser ass dude, he still cheats. You worst of both worlds. Oh yeah, you gotta kill yourself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like yeah. I settled for you and then you cheated? Yeah, that's what? foul. That's foul. No, that's foul. Yeah. Oh God. That's the worst. Yeah. So you gotta just get the good guy and hope he doesn't cheat. Son, we need more women. We need more empowered women. Amanda Knox. <laughs> We need no, Amanda Knox. No, yeah. That's As the Italian uh, <laughs> prosecutor guy would say, Amanda Knox. <laughs> 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 this is the best. I just watched that. Have you guys seen that documentary? No. Oh, uh, it was incredible. Do you guys know who Amanda Knox is? Yeah. I have a, uh, some idea. She killed kids? Her no, kids? she no. killed no. kids, bro. She was wrongfully accused and convicted of murdering her roommate. Mm. Oh, okay. Okay. In Italy. In Italy and put it locked up for years. Really? Yep. Years. And she Got didn't off. do it? Say what? And she didn't do it? She didn't do it. Wow. But she has a demeanor which makes you think that she did. Mm. 
But when the evidence and all this kind of stuff comes out, you're like, nah, she yeah. didn't do it. She kind of got RBF. She is, got RBF big time. What is that? Resting bitch, bitch face. face. Yeah, it's not even bitch face. It's Portland face. It's like, <laughs> what? It's She must be from there. RPF, she must be yeah. from Northwest. Yeah, RPF. RPF, Where Resting Portland face. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, there's something kind of, and she's she's a beautiful girl, and she's like really eloquent and like Seattle. Yeah, she's born in Seattle. There you go. I, I, I know it. I know it. It's impressive. She she is. Uh, I did just see the documentary. They probably said it a thousand okay. times, so it's probably swollen in there. But I, <laughs> I, I, I I do thank you very much for that compliment. I think that she is eloquent, articulate, clearly smart. But there's something a little bit detached right there, and that might come from being like scrutinized by the media for fucking a decade, mm-hmm. and everybody thinking that you're a murderer. Mm-hmm. But even the documentary starts out crazy. Really? Wait, what do you mean? It starts out crazy. She's like, either I killed somebody, or your worst nightmare is true, or something like that. Mm. Which is, any random person could be accused of murdering somebody mm-hmm. and then end up in jail. Mm-hmm. Uh, That's so a bar. Either I'm a nightmare, or your worst nightmare is true. Oh, yeah. shit. But it was like super, there was just no emotion behind it. Like she had the emotional level of someone that would commit murder to their right, roommate. Right, she was right. accused of killing a woman, right? Yeah. Yeah. With her, her boyfriend at the time, her roommate. Right. And you're sold that she didn't do it. I don't think she did it. What, or she, or what, was she aware of it? Was she there? I don't think so. You think the boyfriend did it? Was it a small no, apartment? No, it's pretty clear that she didn't do it. Yeah, I don't think she but did. But she could have been there. Accomplice. That's I don't a, think she did. Mm. Miles 10,000. Miles oh. 10,000. Yeah, that's oh, a yeah. Miles 10,000. We're going to get her on the pot. Yeah. We're going to get her on the pot. I oh, want she, Amanda she's free now, right? Pot. 100% free. I bumped into her in LA. Her. We bumped into her. I didn't know it was her. She had prolonged eye contact with me because I think she was staying with Whitney. And I think Whitney was telling her, yo, really? you got to come on the pod, whatever. But so we literally were talking <clears> about it earlier that day. And then, because I didn't know who she was. I think it was the last person on the planet who didn't know who Amanda Knox was. Mm. And I was telling Whitney, I was like, honestly, I don't know who this person is. I literally was. pushed you and said, that's Amanda Knox. And then randomly we bump into her when we're going to one of these fancy places. Wild. I don't yeah. know. Her. I'll meet her though. Watching female killers, does that get you a little... Uh Bricked? A little slightly Yeah, do bricked. you know why women do it now? Do you Bro, get it? Why I told you this. Do what? Women love serial killer documentaries? Yeah, I watched that Jodi Arias shit. Yeah. I understood it completely. Jodi Arias. Jodi Arias. Oh, why? Because she was a piece? She's a piece. Yeah, she was kind of a piece. And she killed her husband or boyfriend and like took pictures of it. Like, it was crazy. But did was her boyfriend doing anything mean to her? Uh, I don't know. Probably not, bro. <laughs> yeah, he's probably completely innocent. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I no, believe all men. She's an absolute piece. And I watched the documentary. I was like, yeah, I'd let her kill me. I get it. Yeah, she was kind of fine. And I'll be honest, she was very beautiful in the documentary. Amanda Knox? Amanda Knox, very beautiful. Very beautiful girl. Come on, now. Eh? Who is that? Who is this? This is Jody Arias. I think we could do better, bro. Yeah, bro, that's a piece. But as far as killers go. Yeah, but Knox on, got bro. that. Nah. Oh, she's pretty. She looks cute there. Good teeth. Come on, now. Eh? Heavies. Yeah. Okay. What else we got, boys? What else we got? Should we talk about it? What happened? The tragedy? Uh, Mr. Virgil oh, Abloh yeah. is is gone. He is no longer with us. Um, Virgil Abloh, you guys probably know from uh, creating Off White. Yeah, he's mm. also had other band, brands he created. I Head of Louis Vuitton one. now, creative director. At yeah, least. of uh, men's for Louis Vuitton. And then I think the first one he created was that maybe we were all familiar with was a brand called Pyrex. Yeah, mm-hmm. and um, and he died of cancer. Nobody knew he had cancer. Yeah. And uh, which is becoming increasingly popular amongst, uh, I guess, famous people. This idea of like not milking that trauma or not even sharing that trauma. Yeah. Uh, take note, TikTok. <laughs> I can be take that, note. I can be that, don't make me say it. Take note. Okay. <laughs> you don't need to share what happened to you in your fucking day about how difficult it was and put that stupid song in the background. You don't need to do that. It's okay. You, something shitty can happen to you, and you can keep it to yourself. You don't immediately have to share it on fucking TikTok or Instagram or whatever. Um, so Virgil ends up passing away, uh, tragic. And, um, he represented something that was really interesting. He represented like in the, in the fashion industry, uh, talent, not clout. Now, when you have talent, there's clout associated with it. Yeah. But he would create things. I think the easiest thing to make something cool in fashion is to take what is the least cool thing and attach a person of stature to it. Mm-hmm. Um, either a model or someone that's like uh, an influencer within the fashion world. And mm. then all of a sudden <clears throat> it becomes cool. Kanye and Kim started wearing champion and then champion hoodies became the fucking Perfect thing. example. Another yeah. example is like the dad Nikes. Yeah. Remember? So it's like, what's the least cool sneaker ever? Okay, yeah. a dad Nike. Throw it on. Now it's cool because yeah. it's not cool. Right. And then eventually enough people that are 
cool, wear it, and it becomes cool again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Grandma sweaters kind of had like a little moment. 100%. Yeah. Basically, anything Kanye does is that, yeah. right? Yeah. And to me, it's the easiest version of fashion. So uh, so basically, uh, what I liked about Virgil was is that he created cool shit. He took cool things and made them cooler. Right. He could go and get like the worst fucking sneaker and go, okay, I'm going to try to like add some sauce to this and make it cool. But he'll take a fucking Air Force One, a sneaker that we wear, that we already like, and make the coolest version of that. The Jordan, Jordan 1. The, the Jordan Chicago, 1. Chicago the Jordan. most iconic sneaker You know how hard it is time. to take the thing that's so fucking iconic and cool and make it even cooler, even yeah. better? Yeah. Like it, he, the guy had real fucking true creative talent. It yeah. wasn't just, let me throw a famous person on this, a Richard Meal watch. It's like, all right, if I can get OBJ to wear it during the game, I guess it's really cool now. Yeah. All these rappers pay a million dollars for the watch, so I guess it's cool. There's nothing good about a Richard Mill watch. I don't. I'm not they impressed suck. by it. I'm not impressed They're by it. They're objectively ugly to look at. Yeah. Maybe the inner workings of it, if you're a real watch nerd, you know how it I don't goes. even think that. Mad gaudy, not into it. I don't know. They're going to have their run, and we're all going to yeah, look back same. on That's why I don't have a Richard Mill. It's exactly. like super That's gaudy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But he actually was a true creative. It wasn't yeah. clout. It was creativity. And yeah. then when you're a true creative, and then it's executed, and people love it, of course there's clout associated with it, but... It was he was a true fucking creative. Yeah. How often do you get that in yeah. this you know marketplace where you can get things that are absolutely worthless and give them value if enough people believe in it? Yeah, you know, like we live in the crypto times where like if we just believe in three letters, mm-hmm. enough people can come fucking millionaires off of it. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying it's necessarily bad. I hope that we all become fucking millionaires off, yeah. off of it. But it's really cool to see someone create a thing or improve upon a thing that we already think is great with just cool ideas and great aesthetic. And that is why, uh, yeah, he'll be missed. Yeah. It was sad for me because I think he was already great, but like where he was going to go, I think it was going to be like, I thought he was going to be like a name in the way that like Louis Vuitton is a name that just lives on. Mm. And it was just sad to see somebody that's, it's like if Michael Jordan walked away after like his second, maybe third championship and, like, and then what never, could he have done? Yeah, yeah, definitely if he never came back. Yeah. Now, once he came back, you're like, oh my God, this is. The, a whole new level of yep. greatness. Yep. I think that's kind of what it feels like when it got cut short. Now, all y'all motherfuckers that were canceling him for not paying $50 for the Black Lives Matter <laughs> shit, y'all feel bad now? You know what's impressive? That y'all he didn't tell people he had cancer right there. I would have said it. I would have said it right. so fast. fast. He was getting cooked so, for the uh, pop smoke. Album my cover. black life matters. Yeah. <laughs> I'm donating to chemo to save my black life. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I would have said to all the motherfuckers yeah, hating 100%. on him. 100%. And he still came out and was like, yo, I, did, I, can't, I donated 25 k to... You know, bail or yeah. whatever like that to people who got arrested at the right. marches. Like he still felt the need to yeah. say it, but like, yo, real talk. The guy's going through fucking chemo. He knows he has cancer. Cancer's probably gonna kill him. People are shitting on him for a fifty dollar donation. It's like man. aggressive cancer. He knows he's dying soon. Yeah, and he's just letting y'all take your stupid fucking shit. Oh, you're so out of touch. You know what you out of touch with, motherfucker? Mm-hmm. Cancer. People mm-hmm. were saying with the pop smoke album cover, like, man, it seems like he really phoned it in. Like he wasn't really trying. I'm like, yeah. He's doing it from a hospital <laughs> bed, probably. Yeah. <laughs> He's what was from... what was the album cover? Yeah, I'll pull oh, it. Oh, I remember that shit. Yeah, they were shitting on it. Yeah. I was thinking about why celebrities aren't announcing, and I, I thought about this. If you announce you have a terminal illness, you get eulogized early on. You get a lot of love. But if you keep living, people are gonna start to be like, "Hey, motherfucker, why are you still here?" Oh wow! I think that's why you're like, I don't want to deal with that. Yo, that's interesting. I, it's all you're mad intrusive already. But on top of that, if I live, you're gonna be upset. Mm. If I beat it, y'all are gonna be like, <sighs> Yo, I wonder with like the actor stuff, a little different than like if you're behind the scenes as mm-hmm. a creative director, right, right. But with an actor stuff, it's like if you're supposed to be in action movies, and I know that you're suffering. Oh, can I believe it? It's like actors like coming out as gay. Like if you're playing the heartthrob, yeah. Will the American or or global public allow you to bag bad bitches in your movie, knowing full well you smoke cocks in your free yeah. time? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, this is different. What was that guy from How I Met Your Mother's Name? Yeah, again? Neil no, Patrick Doogie Harris. Howser. That's that what motherfucker bring up. ain't played a straight dude since really. Mm-hmm. Doogie Howser. Ain't playing a straight dude. He was bagging bitches in that show. Yeah. Incredibly successful show. Probably made tens of millions of dollars. Probably still makes money off of that. Mm-hmm. The second he comes out as gay, he got to be weird. Right? When He's- did he announce he was gay? I thought it was during the show. Or like maybe even before. Nah. Yeah, the other half of it. And then he was doing a lot of Broadway. And he became a camp. Yeah, it's mm. like he he either can play a gay dude or he plays like something eccentric and weird. Like he can't just be like a guy who fucks girls anymore because the people won't accept it. Right. And I wonder if that's a deal with uh, what was the guy that Tadwick Bozeman? Yeah, it was like he's supposed to play every black hero, strong, successful, James victorious. Brown, Jackie Robinson. Yeah, Jackie Robinson. And it's like if the people starts to to view you 
as someone who is passing away from cancer mm-hmm. tragically, right? Right? Are they going to see that in the character? Yeah. And I mm. wonder if he did it not so he could continue his career, but almost like, yo, I'm really passionate about acting. I want to continue to act, right. and I don't want to put myself in a position where I can't. Like this acting shit might be the thing keeping me alive. Yeah, it might be. He mm. also wasn't a celebrity actor. He wasn't like, you know, some celebrity, some actors really enjoy the celebrity. He didn't seem like that. Mm. He didn't seem like he was out all the time doing fucking photo ops. He yeah. seemed like the only time I saw Chadwick Boseman was when he was doing press for a movie or the movie. Mm-hmm. I didn't see him out a ton. Yeah, he was tired of doing that fucking cross shit. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> bet, all dog. He was like, really, motherfucker? Like, I'm not really... Black Panther, dog. I'm Chadwick Boseman. I'm all famous blacks. <laughs> Wakanda forever, and he like, motherfucker. I got, I got, I don't got that long left. Yeah. I got two years left. Wakanda yeah, forever. Oh God, you telling me forever, you motherfucker, uh, dude? The, honestly, it's so impressive when people are saying Wakanda forever, and you know you're dying to be mm, like, yeah, man, forever. Mm, ah, fuck, good for you, dude. Yeah. That's some noble shit. Yeah, that's why he don't want to do that shit. Yeah. Uh, fuck, it's fuck, weird, fuck, that fuck. gay leading man thing. We don't do that with women, I don't feel like. Oh, if women go gay? Yeah. Like, if there's, like, a leading woman who's, like, like Megan Fox or whatever in her prime, like, if she were to come out as gay, everyone would be like, all right. Yeah. Like, I don't think it would affect, like, our perception of her with, like, Well, then, a Ellen, though, that fucked Ellen, right? Like, yeah, she lost her show. Like, they stopped watching that show. Yeah, in, like, the 90s. Ah, uh, you're saying now. We yeah, don't yeah, care yeah. If a girl came out as full gay, we would. If it's bi, no. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. That bi shit is so funny. A ton of them are that now. What is that? Like uh, a ton of famous actresses who are like attractive and things like that are bi. Is Drew Barrymore bi? Uh, like Cara Delevingne is bi. Uh, <laughs> that bi. Can I tell you about this bi? Yo, shit? please be honest and nuanced. Hey, can you, you explain yeah. bisexuality you real quick? Yeah, yeah. Bi. Yeah, yeah. Is white people not wanting to be accountable for white shit? Bi <laughs> is removing your whiteness and non-binary. Yeah, non-binary too. Yeah, Bi- non-binary oh is the God. easiest version, yeah. but bi as well. Because like, if you're if you're a bi girl, right? Let's yeah. say I come out as bi. Yeah. Now I'm not accountable for white patriarchy at all. Yeah, I'm a minority class. Yeah, right. It's like there's a certain group of white people, and I, when I say group, I don't mean like a small group. I mean it's like a certain like white ideology, which is like. Yo, it's fucked up that I got to be accountable and responsible for all the fucked up things that white people have done. Yeah. Now, all white people are not doing these fucked up things, but the white people that are in power are responsible for the good things and the bad things. Right. right? Any group in power is responsible for both good and bad. In India, Indians are in power. There's a group that are responsible for both good and bad. Mm -hmm. And those bad people are held accountable every single time. If you're criticizing the government, you're criticizing uh, whatever caste maybe it is, right? right. I imagine, but I'm... I'm with you. More or less on on board? Yeah, I'm with you. And this is with every culture. So there are these white people who are like, I don't want to take on the guilt, right? Mm -hmm. Women tried to do this as well, right? White women were like, but I'm a white woman. I'm a minority like you guys, right? right. right? Like, and then all of a sudden they're starting to get the push. We sniffed that that. shit out. Exactly. (laughs) But for a little bit, it was all y'all were on board. I was never, but a lot of people were. were. Yeah, yeah. Like minorities were were like, yeah, that's right. You also suffer oppression from white males, right? Can I please have sex with you? Yeah. Exactly. (laughs) Right? So now I think what you have is like, this is the white version of opting out. And it's like, how do I dabble in another community? Right. In without doing really much. So Mm -hmm. if I'm non-binary, if I'm bi, like if you're a white girl and you kiss a girl in college, you're bi. Mm -hmm. You're bi. You're You're part of the LGBT community. You're going to marry a man. You're going to marry a fucking white guy who works for J.P. Morgan. Right. Who is part of the quote unquote patriarchy, the problem. Right. But you don't have to take any of the accountability because you could talk about the struggle of being a non-binary or whatever it is or bisexual, whatever. 100 percent. It's the easiest way to, to remove yourself from white accountability. Go. Also, there's no ident- you can't you're not culturally you're not culturally appropriating <laughs> <I'm doing> anything. <laughs> you're not. You are the smoke, bro. You're the smoke machine, dog. buddy. I'm a smoke machine. Bro, you're you lost. jump out of your own stage on the infamous tour. <laughs> yeah. You're all smoke. You're the villain okay. lost, bro. You are smoke. I'm just saying it is what it is. But you also can't be accused of cultural appropriation if you come out as bisexual. There's no like, hey, you have to act this way. You're not Taking anybody else's struggle, you get to act however you want to act, and you don't have to worry about people being like, oh, that's fucked up that you're infringing on our... You also can't prove it. Yeah. You, know you can't I mean? really uh, prove it. I can't go up to you and be like, yo, prove you're a bi. And you're like, that, guy, that guy's hot. 
Yeah. Yeah. I'm by now. <laughs> I'm by. Yeah. Like the Canadian Pocahontas we're going to talk about in a bit. Yeah. You can she, prove perfect that. Perfect example. You can prove how, far, you can't prove, uh, you're not, you're not 10% by, you're mm-hmm. not by enough. Ah, I'm by. And with Canadian Pocahontas, like you got to fake care about Native Americans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't got time for all that. Well, yeah. you got to, if, you know you, I mean? if you're pretending I'll, I'll to be by. I'll fake care about cocks. <laughs> That's easier. Yeah, you got one. I got one. Yeah, you don't have Native Americans. I be Native loving American. my shit. <laughs> yeah. My shit fired. Yeah. I be playing with it. <laughs> hey, hey, you bisexual, dog. I'm bisexual, Yo, how much bro. you like your dick? Be honest. Say what, how hey, much you, bro. How much you like? Because I'm, I'm, hey, I'm, I'm what into girls, you? that's heterosexual, yeah. and I'm into me, that's asexual. Yeah. No, what are you talking about? That's, that's not That's not asexual. Ace- Andrew, I'm, a, I'm asexual, <laughs> dog. <laughs> Ain't that asexual? It's not asexual. <laughs> Come on, dude. No. Hey, man, stop making me fit into your boxes, dog. He's an androsexual. He's an androgynous sexual. Yeah. yeah. That's he's, what I'm into. He, he's androgynous. <laughs> Wait a minute, but wait. So back to what we're saying with this this uh, Pocahontas bitch, yeah. right? So it just came out that this woman who was like the leader of like the fucking Native American Health Board or something yeah. like that in Canada, um, Barossa, I think is her name. Yeah, she yeah. just came out as a complete fraud. She's not even Native American. She's like Polish, Russian, and yeah. something else. Incredibly white, like yeah. the whitest white. She's she looking Native American. She's pulling it off though. I'm be yeah, honest. She bro. does look. Na- I that's what I imagine Native Americans look like. Native Americans, I'm sorry, but that's what y'all look like to us. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it is true. Okay, so she's out here, got the whole garb on. I mean, yeah. really doing it. Yeah, and then yeah, they braids and everything. Digging. Yeah, she Dug. looks like the guy in Marvel that like they make like the holes. They go like this. Doctor Strange. Yeah, Doctor <laughs> Strange. She does like Doctor Strange. You know the motherfucker, Doctor Strange and the Asian dude. They go like this, yeah. and there's like a little portal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love that fat Asian guy. <laughs> I tried to watch Shang Chi. That's another one I watched. How was that? Oh, Ronnie Chang's in there. Yo, right? Ronnie's great. I literally just turned it on because Ronnie said yeah. that. I got past Ronnie's part, and I was like, I'm good. Yeah, you're the king of trying shit. We were talking we about trying, that before. Bro. You yeah, just hey, good for you. I'm you bi, try. Bro. You're yeah, trisexual, though. Shit. You're trisexual. <laughs> I'm try. I'm try anything. Try sexual. <laughs> can we just invent a thing for white people so they can opt out of whiteness of white responsibility? Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's just invent a thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. bisexuality. We did. But they actually got to do something. You got non-binary is the best one. Non-binary. Yeah, yeah. Because that's saying I'm not a man or a woman. I use they them pronouns. Ugh, but it's so cocky. Yeah, but then you, you're part of the group. Like, if you're, I guess you're already a cuck if you want no accountability. Like, you live this much better. Well, I don't know if it's much better, but you live a better life because you're white. And the second you have to deal with any accountability be- uh, because of that, yeah. you're like, well, I'm not actually. I'm part of the LGBT community. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Are you? Are yeah. you when you walk into the bodega and yeah. you don't get followed around? You're a struggle appropriator. Ooh. You appropriate struggle. Ooh. You don't like appropriation. Don't appropriate our struggle. Interesting. These people are so dumb. You can just flip all their own shit on them. That's good. It's all just a little bit of gymnastics. That's all you got to do. Anytime they're offended, if you just throw out the word privilege, it's like a fucking landmine. They can't touch a sentence. But but you're 100% right about that if they're being honest with themselves, but they're not being honest with themselves. No. Right? And because they're not, they actually truly start to believe these things. Yes. It's the same thing with going to outer space. Yeah. It's the same sociopathy, right? It's like, I truly want to save humanity yeah. by doing my little pet project. Yes. Right? No, you don't. You just need a convenient reason to spend billions of dollars while people are starving to death. Yeah. Right? And yeah. you're allowed to do that. You made the billions of dollars. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, 100%. do whatever you want to say. This is the same thing. Mm. Yes. They need that go go. You need a justification for your own. I don't want to be accountable, so I'm going to force myself to believe yeah. I'm oppressed too. Yeah. I don't identify with any gender. Mm. Who, to, who yeah. does? We need to make a test for it. Okay, go. We need to do like a tw- like an Ancestry.com, but if you're non-binary, you're gay. So that's what... <laughs> that, like, we, got, we need to check. Like, are you actually that? Do you have gayness in your family? Is it 20%? Are yeah. you 50%? Or yeah. are you just making it up like Pocahontas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. that's what Ancestry.com is too. 23andMe, all that shit. Oh, yeah. How do I opt out of whiteness? Yeah, of course. But we got to do that for, for everything. Uh, for everything. Yeah. 23, yeah, I think 23 that's why and I don't believe yeah. any of their results. I think they just throw in a little minority for everybody. A little yeah, black, like a little Indian, a little Everybody's 10% or 2% African or whatever yeah. it is. It's like, ain't we 100%? Like, how far back does this go? Yeah. If, if this shit goes <laughs> to our roots... It should all be African, right? Mm-hmm. If yeah. that's where humanity yep. started. Yep. How does it know when to start? And how does it know to go back only a couple hundred years? Yeah, if it goes back one generation, you're American. How does it know how <laughs> many generations to go back? This <laughs> test is cap. Yeah. <laughs> it Sounded- is. Like, how does it know when to go back? Yeah. I don't Sounded- know. If you trace it all back, aren't we all related? Yeah, aren't that's we all the point just, I'm We're making. all just fucking our cousins. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's, 100%. That's hot as we're fuck. incesting out here, yeah, bro. That's fire. That porn category should be way more broad. Yo, yeah. we're, we're cesting, dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Yo, yeah, we yeah. are cesting, dude. Yeah. <laughs> hey, there's I'm nothing cesty. wrong with cesting, right? You never say that while having sex? Huh? You never say that like dirty talking like yo you like that cuz you like that cuz? you never say <laughs> like that, that though she's hey, like what sis? hey sis yeah <laughs> yeah you're my cousin yeah, someone cuz? yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cuz, like that dick cuz yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't uh, we have the video of the uh, Native American girl talking uh, yeah it's Carrie so funny Burasa we yeah. could play it so can you explain what this is so basically she's giving her TEDx talk in Saskatchewan and, which TEDx uh, is fire bro TEDx is so yeah. funny dude that's a TEDx, TEDx doing a background dude. check first of all mad easy to get a TEDx. Yeah, that's did you I get realized. TEDx? I got did a TEDx, and it's so easy. The producer of the thing was the guy who produced four four one. Production, so they're like, "Hey, shit. we're producing a thing. Do you want to like give a talk?" Fire. And I'm sure they saw maybe like you were popping know. off at the time. You yeah, were cracking I was, off. I got some shit going on, yeah. but at the same time, they were just like, "Yeah, we'll just put you on." Yeah. So there's no rhyme or reason. Yeah. Now my shit happened to blow up because I was did Rogan, and then the people found. But me there's been the a couple. Like it. there was one TEDx I saw where this dude like dressed as like a knight. And he was like talking about like medieval shit and like Fire. walking around in like the full night costume, Fire. just like making up stuff. I was like, what is this? Yeah. But yeah, like, I no, remember yeah. when Ted first came out, I believed everything they said. And then certain people started getting TED talks. And I was like, oh, well, we're just having fun. Yeah. We're just having fun. Who, who, who got it that you stopped believing in it besides me? <laughs> if that was the moment. <laughs> no, no, no. It? I got friends with like fucking 4,000 followers on Instagram and they're just like, in a master's program, and I'm like, okay, you're not, I, I know you. Yeah. You don't do anything. There's no innovation here. Yeah. Good for you. I'm going to watch the speech because I support you, but I'm not going to listen to the shit. No, the OG was te- just a TED talk, and then TEDx was like the answer to be like more localized. And- yeah. That's the satellite just, school. Yeah, That's baby, when you do Harvard online. It's just a online. spin-off, dog. Yeah. That's, That's Harvard online, online bro. Online yeah. 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 Right yeah. Yeah. Come on. What up? Come it's on, a, man. It's a spinoff, dog. Yeah. Who wants to have a spinoff? Cheers had Frazier. Ted got TEDx. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah. But I got I got numbers. Yeah, dude. where's your TED talk, though? Yeah. Talking all that shit. I'm waiting for the big Ted. That's it. <laughs> Teddy? I don't want TEDx. <laughs> okay, so let's listen to this line ass bitch. <laughs> now, I will clarify. What she said is later when they called her out and some of her colleagues called her out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Haters just doing all this work to help Native Americans. <laughs> and these fucking Native Americans are like, no, we don't want your help. Like that. That's the shit I do not get. If she was using it to like do ads for fucking American Apparel or something like that, probably not the right. Yeah, probably not the right. <laughs> 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 but you know, you know she's yeah, like yeah. really Buffalo prof- Clothing Company. Yeah, Buffalo yeah. Clothing. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Buffalo Exchange. Buffalo Exchange. <laughs> <Buffalo Exchange. laughs> <Good call. laughs> but like, if she was like doing yeah, and profiting fuck. off of him doing fucking Buffalo Exchange Gap ads, like she was really profiting off of this identity. She was doing like movies and stuff like that. But she's a fucking government job she's where she's trying to help Native Americans. And if you know she's a fraud, shut your mouth. Also, she's yeah. in Canada, right? It's First Nations. She's in, oh, whatever. It's First Nations. Come on, bro. Come on. Can't be disrespecting God. these. I don't even know that's first. <laughs> what are y'all first of? I was actually. What talking, are y'all first of? I forgot of? who I was talking about. But they the might. arrogance <laughs> that y'all had to leave a nation to cross the ice bridge to even start your First Nation. You're not even close to first. You were one of the last nations. Also, one of the tribes might have killed the actual First Nations. Yeah. So they might be second or third nations. Yes. 100%. Oh, that's a, that's a better point. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> that's a better point. I was trying to follow that one, but I wasn't there. That one makes sense. But my point that I'm trying to make is that there were <laughs> nations that existed before Yeah, them. but they're not saying they're the first nation. They're saying they're the first in the nation. They're the first people on this nation. No, they're saying they're First Nations. <laughs> <laughs> They're saying these are the First Nations here, <laughs> but I'm clarify, fam. Don't be out here First Nationing. Yeah, okay. Do you know what I mean? All right, fair it's enough. like it's like, that's like when white people put cornrows on the cover of Vogue, like a new trend. Okay, they're Kardashians. That's what they did. They're Kardashians. They're Kardashians. Y'all are Kardashians, Native Americans. Yeah. I was talking about it before where I was like, I think it's kind of foul that like we call Native Americans Americans. But if anybody could do cornrows, it's got to be Native Americans, right? That's their shit. Yeah. Black people are kind of appropriating the cornrow from Native Americans. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second because I got to make sure that you guys are smoking the best CBD on the planet. And that CBD is going to be brought to you by Cushy. Okay? Cushy cares about the flower. That's what they're into. They're into the flower. Okay? That is is their masterpiece. That is the thing that they put all their efforts into. And that is the thing that you are going to smoke. If you are smoking flour, you want the pre-rolls, or if you want to roll it yourself, or if you want to get super sexy. I know there's some of you motherfuckers out here that are making the spliffs, right? You're mixing weed and tobacco. You're getting addicted to cigarettes when you don't even have to be. You should be mixing the CBD, the flour itself, Mm. with the weed to make your spliff. One, it tastes so much better. Okay, ten times better. You don't have that tobacco taste. And then two, 
you're not going to get addicted to those fucking cigarettes for something you don't even want to in the first place. Or just buy the pre-rolls like me. You can get them pre-rolls going. The pre-rolls are absolutely great. But Cushy is the one. Cushy is the truth. And these are really the masters of CBD. And again, specifically the flower. They're not trying to do all this other stuff. They're trying to be the best at flower. And that they have achieved. And if you guys want to smoke it, enjoy it cool out you want to reduce some of the anxiety man if you just want something to be social with i enjoy it personally better than smoking them cigarettes and getting all addicted to some shit that's going to kill you so if you want to get on board with the best cbd on the planet you're going to go to cushydreams.com that's k-u-s-h-y okay at checkout use the promo code flagrant you're going to get 30 percent off Mm. your next order through the end of the year okay think about that 30 percent off this is a worthy thing to try, okay? Look for extra holiday deals and fun giveaways on their website and newsletter, cushydreams.com, promo code flagrant. Now let's get back to the show. Okay, are we going to watch this? My name's Morning Star Bear. My name is Morning Ooh. Star Bear. I'm just going to say it. I'm emotional, so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Very good. I'm Bear Clan. I'm Anishinaabe Metis from Treaty 4 Territory. And I want to acknowledge the territory that I'm in, Treaty 6 territory, um, home to the Cree peoples and uh, Cree. Uh, homeland of the Métis Nation. I also want to acknowledge my ancestors who are clearly here with me. Oh my God. Yikes. Son, Canada is so bad at being liberal, dude. I know. They well, can't how, handle COVID lockdowns. They make this bitch an indigenous spokesperson. How'd they find They're out They're scared of Jordan Peterson. They just can't yeah. do any of it right. Do you know how they found out that she Her was Her uh, associate professor was suspicious and then started doing some digging. It's hated. And that's when she came out with the, I was adopted by some people from the what, Metis Nation or however you say right. it. Uh, and so I was so close to them that they felt like they were my real parents. I was closer to them than my real parents. Something like that. And then I think people found out that shit wasn't even true. I think it's just all a thing. So that guy is a real Native American that called her out. Because like that's Native American intuition. Like yeah, you're just, yeah. just hanging out with her. You're like, yo, there's something off with your spirit. <laughs> yeah. like, Let me tell you, there's one vibe. group of people that don't have intuition. <laughs> Is Native American. That's a good American. point. Wait, That's why? a point, counterpoint. Why? So a white guy offers to buy your whole state for five dollars and you're like, yeah, let's do it. They got fucked over in the deal. That's like, intuition. You had an intuition, you don't trust the Where's the intuition guy? to know that the boys were coming and they were about to lose everything? <laughs> where's that intuition? Where's the intuition? I don't think these people have intuition. They made a deal. They're like, all right, yeah, you can have this land, I'll give you this amount of money for it. They're like, all right, bet. And then they got they didn't hold up the other side of the deal. Yeah, we did. We gave them everything. Why do you say we? Because I'm taking on all <laughs> white things. I'm not gonna be like these fucking cucks that claim non-binary, so they have to take remove all responsibility. I'm binary. I am white. Binary. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, actually, I'm not even both of them shits. I'm just men. You nary, dog. You <laughs> nary out this I am bitch. Just mono airy. You in a nary. I am men. I am I. He. What is it? It, he, what is it called? He, he him. him. He him. Yeah, yeah, I'm he him. I'm he him. That's I am how I'm going to start introducing myself to people. I am he. What's up? My name is Andrew. He him. <laughs> he him. Yeah, okay? you got to start with that. That's fire. Yeah. Dude. I got to go. Yeah, we got to bring back pronouns. Yeah, the right Yeah, ones. absolutely. Anyway. Yeah, I don't know. We've probably uh, made fun of Native Americans in an inappropriate amount so far on this podcast. But um, <laughs> Well, listen, wouldn't it be nice if there was somebody trying to help this group of people? Somebody that was out there trying to make sure that they were healthy and you know, they had all this, the supplies they needed to live a healthy but lifestyle. But what if she's taking her job away from a real Native American who's trying to do that? Akash, I agree with you. But yeah, I know, I know. It. Yeah, but don't you just want the best person to have the job? It's, this should be complete meritocracy. If you're saving yeah. lives, whoever's the best. I don't give a fuck what color you are. Yeah. If you save the most <laughs> indigenous lives, you got that shit. 100%. But Native Americans would be like, oh, white people tried to solve the problem before. No, they did. No, you were the problem they were trying to solve before. That's the issue. They solved the problem too well before. Honestly, (laughs) not well enough if if you think in their point of view. I mean, but yeah, y'all didn't really solve that problem at all. What problem? Eddie over here. What problem? Yeah. You don't think that problem was solved? Ain't even enough Native Americans to be a chancellor of health. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Sounds like problem solved to me. Yo. Right or wrong? Interesting. What about that professor that found out though? She that was indigenous. That bitch ain't Native American neither. Hating ass bitch. She Jew. was. <laughs> <laughs> right. Can't just accuse people of being Jewish. Right. How you know if she is or isn't? You don't know. There's no rules anymore. I'm Native American today. But how do you know? I'm Native American. I, he identifies as. I identify as Native American. And what, what is that? 
You don't look Native American. It doesn't matter if I look Native American. He's Native New York. Isn't that not Native American? I'm Native American. Oh, this is actually Native American land. That's a good point. I'm Native American. I'm Iroquois. <laughs> were they in New York? Yeah. <laughs> of course they were. Fucking Iroquois. <laughs> or the Iroquois. Jamiroquois? What are yeah, you talking I'm about? I'm Jamiroquois. Virtual right? insanity right here, dog. I am <laughs> No, like, whatever, dude. Like, anybody's everything now. There's no yeah. rules anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, stop it with rules. Like, Iroquois, actually, New York. Of course they're from New York. I know all the New York tribes, dude. Give me another. I smashed a girl that was Cree once. You got crease here? And she ate my ass. Hungry ass girl. <laughs> <laughs> my ass is a cornucopia. Hey, that was your Thanksgiving. <laughs> hey, hey, right, my boy. Hey, right. <laughs> That's some cranberries. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, I did do that. And how was it? Was it good? And it was phenomenal. I did it. I saw that movie that uh, Leonardo DiCaprio was in, and um, I needed one for myself. Yeah, The Revenant, right? The Revenant. Yeah. Yeah, and your boy grabbed behind the knees, stirrups. <laughs> you know what I mean? Your boy. <laughs> Like that, <laughs> and, then, and then gobble, gobble. You know what I mean? Can we feast? You know, we had a nice use every feast. part of the buffalo, bitch. Use every like that, but I wasn't rotating because I wasn't on a rotating chair. But I just grabbed the stirrups, and it was gobble, gobble time. Yeah, wounded yeah. knees. Yo, was what a real rip. talk, dude. It was yeah, it was great. Cree, Cree, same tribe. Yeah, well, how did that come up? You asked who. <laughs> you asked her what asked tribe? Asked the girl? Yeah. Yeah, of course. And she said she was Cree. She said she was Cree. Why she was Mountain Bear uh, something. What was her name? <laughs> <laughs> it might have been her, to be honest with you. I think it was that girl. I think Catherine Barosa <laughs> ate my ass. <laughs> 100%. Actually, that's the saddest thing to find out that the girl that ate my ass, Catherine Barosa, mm -hmm. was actually not a true Native American. That's fucked up, dog. I know. You were, yo, you are, but you've been betrayed. I have been betrayed. You need to be made whole again. How can I be made whole? You get somebody in that hole again. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Ooh. That was some wordplay right there. Hey, you doing that shit I need to realize that I don't need anybody else. I think that's what I yeah, need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're asexual. I, I'm asexual. I'm Amran. <laughs> <laughs> I think I need to get into my Amran books, yeah. and I need to learn about myself, and I need to feel empowered, uh -huh. and realize that I can achieve anything. Yeah. yeah. I've been watching David Goggins walk for no fucking reason for the last <laughs> month, and it is inspiring to me. <laughs> Because you got to go and get it every single day, even if you have chin splints. <laughs> what's, a, what's a chin splint? Say what? What's a chin splint? That's what I that motherfucker gave me. That's the way they tortured so Asians back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, guys. Everybody needs to be. Y'all yeah. clearly haven't seen Shang Shui. <laughs> or Shang, whatever the fuck that name is. Who's Shang Shui? No, Shang Chi. Shang Chi. Yeah. It's a That's movie by Marvel. Oh, I haven't seen yeah, it. Yeah, trying to pander to the Asian audience. Yeah, Have I haven't seen that it? shit. No, no, no. I'm they tried to pander it. to them? They did. They tried to pander <laughs> to the Asian <laughs> audience. They couldn't get a release in China. But they couldn't get the release in China. <sighs> Joke's on you, Marvel. Mm. It's hilarious. Joke's on you. Yeah, you just got to make a movie. What was that movie about the about America getting destroyed? Yeah. And it's like the highest grossing oh, movie yeah, in China. Oh, yeah, the ever. highest grossing film ever in China is about the U.S. Army getting defeated by Chinese troops. I bet you the highest grossing movie of all time in America. Yeah, with some Russian guy getting murdered or some shit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> 100%. Rocky or whatever. And it gone the, with the wind? Yeah, I think it's gone with the wind. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know shit about gone with the wind. What, what is, is that? gone with that's uh, no, I think I know that one. That's, that's a Native American movie, I'm pretty I think sure. It's Native American. That's when right? that guy falls in What's love with the wind. What's about Miles? You've seen it. Avatar they're saying is like the most uh worldwide gross. That's Which a Native, is, Amer that's a Native American ass worldwide. movie. That's a Native American movie. We're not talking movie. about yeah, that's a Native American worldwide. movie, but that's yeah. that's worldwide. That's cuck oh, shit. So cucky, dude. Yeah. Those cucky. fucking avatars. <laughs> oh, you're hurting our nature. Give me your <laughs> give me your braid and braid up to me so you can feel what I feel. We should have shot them all in the head. <laughs> yeah. Every single one of them. Just showed the up avatars or what? Avatars okay. right huh. to the skull. Which side do you think he was on in that movie? Fucking Son, he loved that movie. Can I tell you something? He loved that fucking movie. That shit was he fire. He loved dog. that movie, hey, though. Whoever made Andrew that? loved it. He who saw it twice. That? James Cameron. James Cameron. Yeah. Hey, James Cameron, Titanic. you've been making some fire movies, He does. Dog. I let you come here and get these kibbles and bits. <laughs> what? <laughs> Grab the knees. <laughs> He's got two more coming out, right? Who, wait, wait, avatars? Yeah. No. Nah, come on, it's been too long, bro. No, 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 no. 
He need to run Trust Titanic back. He need to run Titanic back. Oh, yeah. what's, the, what's the sequel for Titanic? Titanic like? Part Two. But how does it go missing again? Come on, Mark. <laughs> what's the? Come on, Mark. How do you make the movie again? Son, no, you do a different uh, uh, time where the boat didn't get all the way. Son, Terminator. He died. He got fucking crushed. They came out with a second one of those. Exactly. Do we really Living know Leo Titanic? Died? Maybe Dystopian he just was future? over her. Went down deep, held his breath. to another boat. Oh, and then it's Castaway. Yeah, he just went yeah. swimming, yo. And then we just do Castaway and it starts what with him on the island. What do we do Endurance the movie? Oh, that movie would be fire. Yo, Mark got fucking so tricked. It's crazy. How did I get tricked? Mark been reading this movie. Of, what is this called again? It's the called The Book, bro. Whatever, yeah. book, whatever. Yeah. I don't know. This movie with words. This word movie. Yeah. This, yeah. He's been reading this word document. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, he's been reading this book about motherfuckers who wanted to go across Antarctica. Draft dodging ass bitches. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's about, it takes place in what year, Mark? 1915. 1915. Yeah. Okay. What also was taking place at this time? Some would suggest World War One. World War One, the, the Great War. War. Yeah. Okay. And these motherfuckers went on a little trip to go walk across Antarctica. Yeah. Just the David Goggins of their time. Yeah. yeah. Just walking in extreme climates. Which that book is. David wh- Goggins would have yeah. made it way quicker. <laughs> they didn't even make it. <laughs> Son, I, do we want to ruin it? I mean, yeah. yeah. I don't think I'm going to read this this word movie ever. Yeah, well, I'm going to keep it a buck. Yeah. yeah. In order for this to be written, someone needs to make it. Okay. Yeah. Do you okay. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because otherwise we wouldn't know. The I, bet that guy, I bet the guy who wrote it went home and let everybody else die. And then he was like, I'm going to just write some shit. It could, be, it could be Blair one, Witch. It could be Blair Witch. That's true. It could be Blair Witch. There's only one good thing about the whole book. Mm-hmm. And that? that is you that didn't read the book. I read it, Mark. <laughs> you tried. I read the it. book. I tried it. He I watched tried. the movie. Didn't you hear? I what he made said? you tell me. They gave me the synopsis of oh, yeah. every single chapter after yeah, you read. So I've read it too. I've went through it with you. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Captain Shicklecock or whatever his name is. <laughs> <laughs> What's his name? <laughs> yeah, Shippleton. What is his name? Shackleton. Cap- Captain Shackleton. Yeah. So Captain Shackleton, he's doing everything he can possibly do to not uh, defeat the evil that is Germany. Because that's really what it is. The guy's a fucking Nazi. <laughs> Captain Schickeltex is a Nazi. I think he was Scottish. <laughs> oh, curveball. <laughs> wow. 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 Don't let one bad apple ruin the bunch. Oh, that's a good point. Okay? Actually. Sometimes Scottish people can be bad. Yeah. All right? And yeah. Like William Sch- Wallace, a fucking traitor. Whoa, hey, whoa, whoa. Yeah, I was a traitor. He was a traitor? He was a traitor. Hey, hey. We fought for what we wanted to fight for. He was a traitor, <laughs> though. I'm just saying. Guy he was, was a traitor. traitor. Guy was a traitor. He was treacher. He overthrew the British government. Yeah, but that's good. <laughs> 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 do you know what I mean? Sometimes you have to fight for what you believe in. Sometimes mm-hmm. you have to fight for what's right, and you have to do anything at mm-hmm. any cost. Yeah. You would know nothing about it because you support Modi. I support the farmers. <laughs> okay? Yeah. And what happened? The farmers won. How do you and like what Modi, happened? bro? They got yeah, Modi they to won. bend yeah. over, grab them, anchor. Yeah, they Modi won. sucks. Yeah. Modi grabbed his oh, ankles. Modi. Why? Hey. Because of the great Punjabi people of Punjab. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay? Thank you for pronouncing it correctly. Yes, I will pronounce it correctly. It's gully, so gully. off. Short hai. Modi. Modi chore. Okay. Okay? okay? <laughs> You're never going to get to perform in India. Off that say, say it's who? Say it, boy. Just wait. Say it's who? Just wait. I'll go to India and perform right now. <laughs> You're not going to talk shit on Modi? I'm not going to talk shit about <laughs> Modi. Modi the GOAT. Probably the greatest president in the history of India. Yeah, we Is he a president? To, yeah, he's prime minister. Or prime minister. Yeah. What a mm. stupid term. Prime minister. Why they got to be different? <laughs> it's president. Yeah. Europe, cut that shit out. Canada, cut that shit out. Everybody that's prime minister, you're a president. It's president. Yeah, why did why, 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 what is that? Wait, did we are we the ones that I think so cuz the king, yeah. there were monarchs. Is president like the Fahrenheit of <sighs> Probably. Yeah. No, 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 but I leaders? think oh no, I thought this through just as you were saying it. They were kings and queens and monarchs and shit that we were rebelling against. Yes. We weren't rebelling against a prime minister. So they didn't have a prime minister at the time. They didn't have that government. Oh, and then we invented monarchy. president first. And then we have and president. And they just need They're to be a little the different. Fahrenheit. Their government is Fahrenheit. Oh, my God. Pathetic. Customary ass government. Get yeah, the fuck yeah, out of yeah. here, it's bro. president, dog. We that shit is president. Else, we the bro. metric president. in this bitch. That's it. <laughs> I was trying to think of the word metric. That's the metric by which all this shit is... I didn't even put that together. Oh, fuck, don't, don't think out loud ever again. <laughs> nah, son. Please don't think out loud ever again. I put some ill shit together, dog. Podcast. Please. I put some God ill forbid. shit together. God forbid. Okay. okay Keep finish? talking about your Scottish uh, Nazi sympathizer. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. I'm just saying. Shickle they, dick. They, You're saying they, I got tricked, which I don't You got believe. tricked. He was like, oh, my God, they endured all this shit. They didn't do anything. They just went to a nice fucking island, and they needed an excuse not to be in the war. They conveniently got back right when the war was over, right? Yeah, and then the guy joined the army. Yeah. During oh, peace, now the war is over? To. If he doesn't join the army right after, they're going to say he's a traitor. He left during times of war, 
Right, he has to join. And the war is over. Yeah. There's no army. Hello? What are you doing? Just having barbecues in that army? It wasn't over. It was two years later. The war was still in the, he was still in the thick of it. No, was it really in the thick of it? Yeah, he came back in like, what, 17? 1917? Hmm. It was still happening. End of the war. Came for the easy part, <laughs> this motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> My man yeah. came and showed up after intermission. What are we doing? Don't worry about it. But it is kind of fucked up because they had like, like if the journey is true, it was a crazy yeah. journey. Like, if, and if the journey mm-hmm. is true, which I think is cap because nobody's going to push back and you <laughs> need to act like you went through some real shit because you can't be like, yo, I was on a boat ride for two years while you guys were in trenches shooting a fucking journey. The sketchy yeah. part is that he sold all the rights to like the book before he went on the journey. Like, that's how you made your money back in the days and explore. You'd be like, all right, I'm going to go on this journey in order to finance the trip. When I come back, I'm going to do the speech at your school. I'm going to go get my research to you guys. I'm going to do the book with you. And then you pay me before. Mm. And then those people finance, like the publisher and shit. Mm. So I'm like, that's the only sketchy part is that it's already paid for. He's got to come back with a story. Yeah, and it might not have been that interesting. But then I'm like, that's every adventurer. But then if he fictitiously came up with a bunch of ill shit, I give him credit for that too. Yeah, because, yeah, history's written by the winners, right? He won. And, bro, if you write some good-ass fiction, that's fine. Yeah. J.K. Rowling, the goat, you know what I mean? Yeah. Good fiction. It's plausible. He used lies to tell the truth. Oh. That's important. That's a good rationale anytime you're lying about some shit. Ooh. Mm. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, mm. ooh, ooh, ooh. That is interesting. Okay, uh, talking about lies to tell the truth, what are we going to do about the crime epidemic in Los Angeles? And by the crime epidemic, I really mean Seth Rogen and YouTube's own Casey Neistat going at it on Twitter. Yeah. Have you seen this? Yes. Okay. They have a nice little Twitter back and forth. We can pop a picture up. I'm going to pull it up. And show that. It actually is kind of friendly. It, it's not antagonistic really in any way. I think that if you're someone who's from Los Angeles, we have someone from Los Angeles here. Uh, both of them are clearly living in Los Angeles. Uh, Casey used to live in New York, obviously. That's when he was uh, you know, doing all these amazing vlogs and really like making vlogging a... Uh, lifestyle for people like hmm. all these people who are vlogging right now are doing it because of Casey. Hmm. Casey started vlogging. He did the vlog every single day. I mean, it's unbelievable hmm. what he did. Um, so if you hate vlogs, you bl- you blame Casey Neistat. If you love them, then you should thank him. But he revolutionized a form of storytelling on YouTube. Yeah, and he was exceptional. Uh, so he basically his like kids' car got broken into in L.A. He tweets out, I'm hoping we can get that I think out. his so car I'm got broken into, and he had stuff for his daughter's birthday, I think is what he was saying. Ah. That's what I think. If gotcha. I'm not mistaken. Mark's pulling it up right now. So, basically, so, our cars got robbed this morning because Los Angeles is a crime-riddled third-world shithole of a city, but tremendous appreciation and gratitude to the hardworking officers of the LAPD West LA, who not only arrested the motherfuckers, but they got all of our stolen goods back. Okay. Um, now that is what Casey said. Now, uh, what's his face? Seth Rogen responds. He goes, dude, I've lived here uh, here for 20 years. You're nuts. Ha ha. It's lovely here. Don't leave anything valuable in it. Meaning the car. It's called living in a big city. And then Casey goes, I can be mad though. Right. I feel so violated. And Seth goes, you can't be mad, but I guess I don't personally view my car as an extension of, my, of myself, and I've never really felt violated any of the 15 or so times my car was broken into. Once a guy accidentally left a cool knife in my car, so it keeps happening, you might get a little treat. And Casey goes, I didn't get any treats. He just took the decorations from my daughter's seventh birthday and left bloody handprints. Serious question, how did your car get broken into 15 times? And he goes, oh, I lived in uh, uh, West Hollywood for 20 years and parked on the street. Also, it sucks that your shit was stolen, but L.A. is not some shithole as far as big cities go. It has a lot going for it. Okay. A couple things going on right now. Uh, I think right-wing uh, folks need a new Chrissy Teigen. And uh, unfortunately for Seth, he tweets enough with the opinions uh, that he has where he's about to be that. Mm. And I don't know if Seth realizes it, but they're making him that. Right. He seems to be tweeting on any big cultural moments. He seems to be sharing an opinion and having it. He might be high making fucking places to roll your weed up and sell them on the internet thinking he don't give a fuck, you know, making movies, doing this kind of stuff. But what's going to happen is right wing people need a right wing Twitter need a Hollywood celeb to hate. Mm-hmm. And he shares all the opinions right. of the people they like to hate. Right. And he I, engages with And he engages with people, people he goes back and long. forth. Yeah. And he's getting tons of positive feedback, too. So I'm sure all of like his friends that are in Hollywood are like, yeah, tell him our city's not that bad, et cetera. Yeah. That's what I did. Like it, To make the argument for him, when I was on Rogan and Rogan was like, New York is whack, I was like, no, it's not. It's fucking great. Yeah. I would defend my city, too. 
Yeah. People were saying New York is falling apart. And I was like, bro, this is New York. Like, this is kind of what it looks like. Now, I also understand Casey, which <clears throat> he sees frustration in getting his car broken into. He yeah. also probably sees L.A., the landscape of L.A., looking a little bit differently post-pandemic yeah. and even during the pandemic. We see all these videos popping out of people getting robbed while they're eating. Yeah. You know, very casual robberies. Like, yeah. if this is the way to get the rid of the, uh, you know, eating in the street thing, yeah. then that's the perfect way to do it. You know, mm-hmm. like... If that's how the city wanted to shut down outdoor dining, like, you know, New York, they gave <laughs> the ability to have all the people yeah, in the yeah. street. Like, the way to do it is just have a f- few videos of people just getting robbed for their yeah. watches while they're eating a fucking smoothie or something like yeah. that. I'm eating inside. Here's a video right here. We'll play it. Um, now, this is 100% a setup. Like, 100% this is a setup, but whatever. We'll talk about that later. So he just pulls up with the gun, with the extendo clip, I think. And, uh, yeah, he got the extendo clip, and they just takes both their watches, they go back to eating, and then they're out of there. And these people at this table don't even know. Nobody has a fucking clip. It's inside. Oh, yeah, they went inside. Wow, that's that's wild. Anyway, point being is that I think Seth is about to become this next version, right? So he should be very careful about that because, you know what? Young conservative kids, they like his movies, too. They like that humor. Yeah. Right? So I don't think that he wants to become this, like, very polarizing political figure when... He probably doesn't even care. I don't know what he really cares about, but I, I'm sure he cares more about like making movies than he does like making arguments about whether uh, L.A. has enough crime or doesn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, this uh, this argument of like um, it's just life in a big city. It's like when does that stop? It's like uh, when people are just punching Asians in the head. Is that hey, this is life in a big city? Yeah. What are you talking about, don't Asian? Hey, it's life. And hey, when they're beating up Jews and fucking bro- hey, 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 yeah, it's life in a big city. People do the exact opposite when they talk about America's problems. They'll be like, America, there's like racism here and blah, blah, blah. We're this trying is, to. This yeah. is life in America. Oh, that's America, man. This just just get used America. to it, man. It's whatever. Yeah, it's a very. So which I don't think should be the response. It should be like, oh, yeah, it's a great place, but we should try to improve it. We can approve getting your shit stolen. Yeah. And, uh, but I also understand people being defensive over a city that they live in that is being kind of used in a culture war to showcase that like defunding the police is bad and that Democrat run cities are shitty. Yeah. Right. And I guarantee you, I don't guarantee, you, but my suspicion is if Casey Neistat did not compliment the police, Seth Rogen doesn't respond. I don't know. I, don't know. I, mean, I think just it's trashing the, com- the city. I, I think, think it's a combination of calling the city a shithole and complimenting the police. Cause those tap into two things. I think it's the city a shithole. And I also think he, the one tweet that I thought was telling when he was like, I guess I just don't view a car as an extension of myself. Where a lot of people, you get your car broken into, they feel violated. Mm-hmm. To him, it's like you leave a fucking jacket somewhere and someone steals it. Or like you leave an umbrella somewhere and someone steals it. It's yeah, like, yeah. all right, this is just a thing. You took it. That's fine. Why are you, get, why are you acting so fucking crazy about it? Yeah. You don't insult my city because of a fucking car break. And who cares? Yeah. You still got the car. Yeah. I think that's how he's saying. He, people who fucking love cars and like, that's my baby... Every one of them be like, yo, that's fucked up. Also, man. having kids, I think, plays a role, too. Yeah, Like, you get true, your shit broken true, into, true. and they steal something that belongs to your kids that affects your kids. All of a sudden, yeah. you're not dealing with your car. You're dealing with an extension of, like, your family. And, like, and you let didn't someone know that near your either. kids. Say again? You let someone near your kids. I yeah, mean, exactly. Which Robert, but still. It, it psychologically yeah. fucks you up. Whereas, like, if you don't have kids, it's like, like, I don't have kids. If someone broke into my car, I'd be like, whatever. Yeah. And Casey also is, a, I think, a fairly left dude. Like, he was like, very vocally against Trump. Mm-hmm. He said he voted for Biden in 2020. Like, this is a guy that's not, like, some... Republican spokesperson right, thanking the right, cops. Right. But prob- their private, not private, their public conversation is being used in this culture. Yes, war, yes, right? absolutely. And I think that, unfortunately, for both of them, like, I don't know, Casey never seemed like the most political figure, but I'm not a big Casey fan, so I don't know, I don't really know. I know he had one blog that he said, like, he said it the wrong way, but he was very, like, if you are voting for Trump, you are co-signing racism, misogyny, blah, blah, blah. Right. He said some shit like that. He was pretty... Was so pretty they adamant. probably agree on political yeah. shit. Yeah. yeah. So I think yeah. Casey's trying to be objective, going like, yo, I've lived here. The shit, the city looks worse yep. than it did. Yep. We should probably do something to change it. And here's a... Per- I mean, Dove, you're you're from LA. You've experienced LA. Talk Absolutely to me. different in the last few years. Really? Absolutely. Notably. And it's on both sides. So before, they were like, okay, the homeless population... That's growing. The the police aren't really policing that. The pandemic kind of pushed that forward. But the voting in of this district attorney, which for folks that want to know what really changes your city makeup, he was also the DA of San Francisco. George, piece of fucking garbage, Gascon, go fuck your own face. <laughs> came to L.A. Mm-hmm. I'm in. <laughs> Won't I'm in prosecute now. people in the same way. And I mean, like, I'm all for, you know, drug crimes, things like that, or, you know, misdemeanors in that sense but when it comes to crimes and knowing that you can get away with shit it's open season 
So in other words, so like violent crimes not getting prosecuted the same is what you're no. saying. Well, we it's don't know. Like, I don't know if that, is that what you're no, saying. No, violent. He is. He's against that. He wants a different type of reform. He's really dubbish. So in the terms prosecution of, that. of of a specific crime, if you're believing what Dub is saying, would uh, either promote or inhibit you doing that crime if you are a criminal. Mm -hmm. In other words, right now you see a lot of these videos of people running into a CVS and so they run into a Walgreens yeah. and they take a bunch of things. And I think that's basically because like all crime under $900, yeah. all theft, is uh, you get a citation. Mm -hmm. It's not looked at as a felony. Yeah. Right. And, and he's been an advocate against cash bail. So people that commit something, I mean, they're just out right away instead mm -hmm. of like holding them. And I mean, a lot of these offenders, you, you're hearing stories like committing uh, five crimes in a week. And yeah. they just know they're going to be out. So. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so I guess, yeah, so I guess that's frustrating. And then, I listen, I'm not going to be somebody who sits here and goes, yeah, I understand how a, a district attorney affects the city. Right. I have no fucking clue. Yeah. But I do understand how um, the penalty for an, illegal, for an illegal activity could change my willingness to do it. Right. Given I really needed something. Right. For example, let's say I need $500 to make rent, mm -hmm. right? And I could steal five hundred dollars worth of shit from Walgreens that I could resell, or I could rob someone on the street. Walgreens. Robbing someone on the street—that's different. Yeah, I might go to jail for that. Yeah, but if I know all I gotta do is pay a citation for stealing this shit from Walgreens, 100%. yeah, shit. And, and they're not gonna go against you. You try to rob someone, they might fight you. They could kill you. They could have a knife. Yeah, go on to CVS and you can just walk out. And it's easy to not feel bad for CVS. It's yeah. easy to be like, I'm robbing a fucking billion dollar corporation, not yeah. some guy going mm -hmm. to his job. Who cares? Yeah. I'm listening. I'm like, yeah, that's how it is. That's why those videos, I think we were talking about this yesterday a little bit, but that's why those videos of people getting like robbed uh, while they're eating. Yeah. That's why those videos are so profound. Like, it, because when you see someone rob a Louis Vuitton store, there's part of you that's also like, man, fuck Louis Vuitton. Yeah. I don't see myself in Louis Vuitton. Are you yeah. Crazy? Like, no, you're too expensive for me. I can't afford you. Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah. It's yeah. on some Robin Hood shit. It's like, finally. Steal from the rich. I yeah. wish I had the balls to steal some Louis Vuitton. Boom. It's like a bank robber movie. Like, I love living through that guy. You eating a burger and fries, a motherfucker comes up to you while you're on a date with your girl, takes your watch. You're yeah. like, oh, shit. Yeah, that shit's emasculating, bro. Yeah. Oof. I like watches. I like burgers and fries. I got a girl. Yep. Uh, that might happen. So Ann takes your girl's watch, too. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, you know I mean? I pay for that. Come on, yeah. yeah I got You're my first me twice. nice watch. <laughs> I'm think, I saw this. I was like, bro, I can't go eating on that with, this, with this watch in L.A. I got to put yeah. on a fucking calculator What if someone watch? wants my Apple watch? What if they want, you know? Yeah. yeah. It could happen. Yeah. yeah. At any time. They could just yeah. walk into Apple. It's less than $900. <laughs> yeah. Just walk into Apple and take that shit right off the fucking What is it, the counter or whatever it is? What yeah, is it? Those the, little yo, hey, real talk, bar. if you want a fucking iPhone 11, just go get that shit, bro. Yeah. Sprint out the store. What are they going to do? Yeah. All right, guys. We're going to take a break for a second because I got to make sure your balls are looking good. I just trimmed mine and I use my Manscaped motherfucking lawnmower. And let me tell you something right now. If you haven't used it just yet, you're absolutely an idiot. Okay? You got to get it nice. You got to get it beautiful. You got to get it trim. I know winter comes around. You want a little more warmth on your genitals. But what I'm telling you is your girl, the girl you're about to meet or the girl you're about to break up with, all of them fucking hate it. I've heard it. I know we ignore it. But the reality is there is a much more efficient way to have your dick look amazing. And that is with Manscaped. Okay? This is the best ball trimmer in the business. And you're going to use it. You're going to use it because it's going to cut down on time. Back in the day when you have to use the fucking scissors, you have to actually take the razor, get mm. all trimmed. You're there for 30 fucking minutes if you got hairy balls like me. 30 minutes, okay? I don't have all that time. I'm with my motherfucking Manscaped, and I'm in and out of there in under five. Beautiful dick, pristine, shaved up, fade down, ready to go, five minutes, no brainer. How are you going to get it? Let me tell you how you're going to get it. You're going to get it with 20% off. That's right. All you got to do is go to manscaped.com slash flagrant. That's 20% off plus free motherfucking shipping by going to manscaped.com slash flagrant. For a clean trinity and beyond, your space balls will thank you. Manscaped, that was corny as hell. But having a beautiful looking dick is not. So make sure you go to manscaped.com slash flagrant and that's 20% off plus free shipping. Let's get back to the show. It's tricky. I, I totally understand if you're someone from L.A., you feel more affected by this, why you'd be upset, and why you would rally to the people defending you. 
right? The people that are out there going, yo, we need to do something about the crime. Yo, we need to do something about the homeless. Yo, we need to do something. And then you see a guy like Seth Rogen who probably lives, I would assume, in an area where he doesn't have to deal with as much of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And he's just going, life is good. Yeah, I don't blame his perspective either because, like, he's insulated from it. Yeah. Like, but you can't blame him for not knowing. Yeah. You can blame, you can bl like, if you know for a fact, I think this is why there's so much resentment for the, uh, the, uh, the Hollywood elites, if you will, by like the right wing Twitter brigade mm -hmm. is because they're like, you benefit from all the shit we fight for. Mm -hmm. Like, we don't want to pay a lot in taxes. You don't. Yeah. yeah. You got these tax attorneys. Mm -hmm. They're finding ways where you get to skip out on fucking taxes. And then you're going to shit on us for saying we want lower taxes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. You're talking about the, the I mean, this is almost like a hacking example. You talking about the build the wall shit. And it's just like you have your little walls. Mm -hmm. You know, you have your little walls that block off your fucking gated communities. Yep. Mm -hmm. Those walls work for you, but you're going to shit on us and call us racist for wanting to build a wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think there's there's another one about, um, well, I forget exactly what it was. But the idea is like all the things that we get criticized, we, the right wing motherfuckers, they're going, all the things we get cr criticized for, you actually profit from. Mm -hmm. And you enable in your own lives. So yeah. who the fuck are y'all to criticize us? And I guess yeah. they would say, conversely, the things you advocate for, you don't got to deal with. So, like, if you're advocating for, like, oh, like, open border, like, no one's illegal. Yes. It's like, yeah, you live in a place where it's all white people in a gay oh, community. Oh, it was, the, it was the security thing. It was like, yeah, we should defund the police. And it's like, well, you have private you security. You have private security, mm -hmm. yeah. There's, no one's touching you no matter what. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the people that actually might need the police, now they're getting fucked. Yeah. You will never get fucked. You'll never get touched. Mm -hmm. So you can be this advocate for all these things that don't affect you in any way. Right. Yeah. So it's like, shut your fucking mouth. But I yeah. get their perspective because like they're living their life through their lens and they put themselves in this position where they worked hard and got all this money and they're able to afford all these luxuries. Yeah. That like they maybe work it's hard. <laughs> Actors, maybe so Seth Rogen. Nothing. Seth Rogen <laughs> writes. He writes and he I give Seth Rogen credit. Yeah. If you write, if you direct, if you just act, yeah. you don't work hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ch That's why Channing you Tatum not work. Motherfucker, once he stopped dancing, that motherfucker stopped working. <laughs> when he was dancing in those movies, that's work. Yeah, you choreography. You know, Magic Mike, he was like, working. That w e r k. Work. Put yeah. that motherfucker back on the pole, yo. Yo, <laughs> I don't want to yeah. hear about this shit. Yeah, but if you put yourself in a position where you're insulated from life. It's like, yeah, I get why you have that perspective. Yes. Like, you become out of touch because you put yourself out of touch because being in touch is hard. But does being out of touch absolve you from criticism for mm. your perspective? Not necessarily. Like, I empathize with it and I get it because, like, I'm probably out of touch with the shit on a global level. Yeah, you know of course I mean? we are. So I'm like, eh, I get it. Like, I'm not really actively working to understand the... I get it, but he can still be criticized and maybe that criticism will have him open his eyes and go, oh, shit, maybe mm -hmm. there's something going on right yeah. here. Yeah. It's just saying it's easy. It's easy when you're chilling on your fucking massive. I don't know where where he lives or how he lives, yeah, yeah. but it's easy if you're chilling in the hills on your estate and you have a pool and you're looking over the city and from above the city look all right. Yeah, you know LA looks fine from above. Yeah, you know it looks beautiful. It looks like there's no crime going on. At least the robberies homeless. are quiet now. It's you know quiet. what I mean? Like there's so nice. yeah. 100%. I also think he caught some left wing criticism for this too because he was detached from society. He's, he's judging the struggles of everyday people. And that's a Chrissy Teigen thing. And that's yeah. That's the. I think this is the perfect Twitter story because it lets everybody be outraged. Yeah. Because if you're left or right, you can be outraged. It's Seth Rogen, you're so out of touch. And then you, if you're left, you can be outraged with Casey Neistat. How can you call it a third world shithole? Mm -hmm. That's too strong. Some like feminist spokesperson came out and was like, the <laughs> wording was too mean. It's like, bro, he just got his car. He, yeah, you just got your car broken into, but still be PC. Yeah. Your daughter's seventh birthday is ruined, but you need to make sure you're not politic. You're not insensitive toward an inanimate object yeah. of a city. <laughs> I had the. Uh, uh, who was it? Who was it? Oh, I gotta keep the name private. But uh, they said their reaction was, uh, "You can't call it third world because the cops wouldn't come." <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean third world? You got your shit back. Yeah, yeah. cops ain't coming to help you, and you definitely ain't getting your fucking. That's shit second back. at least. Exactly. You know what I mean? like, yeah, 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 definitely. But yeah. this is the most first world shit that the cops would actually arrest the people that stole your shit out of yeah. your car, and you would get everything back. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. only happens exclusively in the nicest parts of the first world. Yeah, or if you're rich in the third world. So Casey Neistat might have got it anywhere because he's rich as fuck. <laughs> yeah. But that's it. Everybody else, uh, you hey. That, I was yeah. going to arrest a guy, but he bribed me. So what so can you, you do? you don't even get your kids back when you're stolen <laughs> in the third world. I don't know if you're getting your shit back. You know what I mean? Like, that's, yeah. a, that's a maybe in the third world. Yeah. <laughs> you get your kids stolen in Mexico, yeah. you better have the money. Yeah, yeah, I'm not familiar with Latin American third world. I'm talking <laughs> Asian oh. American third world. Oh, that's India? The, yeah, yeah. That's They're going to know who took your shit? Oh, uh, if you're rich, you're taking care. You're fine. We'll take care really? of everything. If you're rich, if you're politically connected, you're good. Like, your life is good. 
you're protected. Even if you get robbed, they're going to get your stuff back? I think so. Wow. You probably got... We, I, I think I stayed in a place with like armed guards outside. Yeah. Would, would people be less likely to rob from a rich person? Because they go, oh, there's going to be hell to pay yeah. for this. I can yeah. just rob from like a slightly richer person than me that doesn't have shit anyway. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And then cops don't give a fuck. But yeah, I think the conservative reaction to this is to look at someone like Seth Rogen and be like, yo, this guy's a piece of shit. Like, he hates the regular people. He hates conservatives. Like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. I think that's unfair. Yeah. And I'm like, if you're, if you're in his spot, you probably think the same thing. I don't I, think he's an evil person. I, I literally... I just think he's out of touch. Yeah, I, I, I think there's a little bit out of touch, and I think there's also, a, like, an uber defensiveness. Like, you ever have your girl criticize something that is true about your mom, and you're like, yo, yo. Yo, yeah, why are you yeah. saying that? Yeah, yeah like, I agree, chill. but why are you saying it? Yeah, like, yeah. so, like, it can be something that is facts like yeah. my mom's brussels sprouts are trash yeah and her carrots were awful <laughs> but just hearing my girl be like yeah like i tried to pick up the carrot and yo, like yo, the fork yo, went yo, right yo, through yo, it yo. and i'm like yo yo yeah, yeah. yo i'll ball my fist right now <laughs> and keep talking about my mom's trash ass <laughs> carrots chris breezy my mom's what are you trash doing? Ass carrots. Yeah. so i think there's a little bit of that yeah. like that motherfucker lived there for a while put the time in sees everybody shitting on his city just like how I felt with New York. I was yeah. like, nah, I don't even care if motherfuckers get robbed nonstop. That's New York. Yeah. Don't get robbed, stupid. Also, <laughs> if you went through yeah. it and you made it, you look at that guy like, Yo, shut the fuck up with your little complaining. Yeah. Yeah. Like your parents who made it through tougher shit than you and the, wherever they're from, when you complain about stuff, like, shut the fuck up. Yeah. How many times this happened to me? Yeah. Stop yeah, yeah. it. That's not an excuse. You Good did deal. do that with New York with big time. Yes. People were like, Rick Moranis just got punched on the Upper West hey, Side. Like, Yo, bro. check your back, Head Rick. Head on the sweat bone. <laughs> Come on, Rick. You know what I mean? Honey, you been I here too long. To not- <laughs> <laughs> Real talk. That's, I did do that, man. Yeah. We always now. Hey, if Rick Moranis got knocked out in LA. You'd be like, "Yo, what's wrong with this LA's city?" LA's falling apart. It's fa- what this? LA's falling apart. <laughs> now isn't Seth Rogen from Vancouver or some shit? He's yo, Canadian. Yo. Yes. Yeah. He's don't Canadian. don't talk about Vancouver, bro. Yo, Come a lot on, bad. So. Okay, you, 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 you wrong. That's where I took down that creep. <laughs> <laughs> International yeah. butt munch. That's hey, all right. We out here, dogs. Yeah, out here. Um, okay, what else we got? What else we got? Skis. What else we got? You want to talk about Omicron? Oh yeah, son. More. Uh, okay. So son. Omic, we got a new variant coming from South Africa. Yeah, brand new release just dropped. And I feel bad for son. for South Africa because it's called the South African variant. It's the Omicron variant. But like it's known as the South African one, yeah. and basically Biden was like, "Yo, we got to shut down travel from South Africa." They're being mad racist. Yeah, so dude, this is why all those white Africans, bro. Like, super why, why would he do that? But what, what is real fucked out about it is that South Africa is like, "Yo, yo, yo, we just we just found it, yo. Like, <laughs> it ain't even ours. Like, we was just the first ones. That, it's like whoever smelt it dealt it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. that's them. <laughs> that's the perfect example of smelt it dealt it. Like the shit could come from Zimbabwe. Yeah. But since they don't have like the sophisticated viral technology over there, uh-huh. obviously because of AIDS in South Africa, they know about the virus shit like crazy. Yeah. There's like a lot of like money that's getting put into this. Mm-hmm. So they were just the one to pick it up, and now everybody's blaming them. And low key, I'm like, if I'm another country. I didn't see nothing. I didn't see shit. <laughs> yeah. Like this is the worst way to react to it. I understand. Obviously, you want to make sure that you know a new virus doesn't get into your country. Shut shit down. Yeah. You always got to deal with the what is it? People, the supply chain issues. Blah yeah. blah blah. Right. Everybody wants to make sure the supply chain is fine. But you are what's called disincentivizing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Disincentivizing. Yeah, you're punishing the people for doing the right thing. Yeah. Yes, you're disincentivizing these people that are doing the right thing. Yeah. Because they know if any new variant pops up anywhere, now that's on you. Yeah, but it could have been a motherfucker from China that went to South Africa. Yeah, we we developed this variant. whole system to not do that. We had this whole fucking the Delta, Omicron, whatever the fuck, Epsilon. Yeah. yeah, the whole naming system, and then we just said fuck it. It's a South African strain. It's a South African strain. Haven't and, they been through enough? And but the funny is that. <laughs> The funniest thing about the the South African shit is that they skipped over. They skipped two. They skipped over two letters. Yeah. Because they're doing it off of the Greek alphabet. Yeah. yeah. So what are the two letters that they skipped? New. New. And Kai. And Kai. Now new. That's fire. New strain. One? It's the new strain. They wanted to skip it because they thought it'd make confusion with people being like, "Yo, the new strain," and people were like, "What?" There's it is new the new strain. No, for now. You. Yeah, but it's, now, no, but it's the new strain. But then there's going to be a new strain later, and they're going to be like, oh, yeah, the new strain. They're like, the new one? They're going to be like, no, no, the old one that's called new. And you're like, why so is it called new? So they skipped that one. And it ain't who's on first, that, motherfuckers. That's the, what they're afraid. Mean, I understand that a little bit. Yeah. And I you're talking about the World just, Health just Organization? Just a that's bit. what you mean? Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> now, what is the letter after new? Kai. Now, Kai, how do you spell that? Also, it's not Kai. It is Kai. No, you were also in a fraternity and had to know this. It's nah. Zai. It's Zai. No, it's Kai. We were in a fraternity called Kai Sai. And it was spelled C H I. Fuck. 
Yeah, that's a good right? point. Yeah. It's no, that's Chai side. Mind blowing. That's Chai. It's, it's Zai. Okay. Are you sure it's Zai? Yeah, fraternity dudes are the smartest dudes in college, dude. I, I thought, I'll be honest, you said Kai yesterday, and I was like, I guess it's Kai. I I said, don't put that on me. You bro. did. Don't, you said Kai yesterday. Don't do this again. You did yeah. say Kai. Do you said Kai on the Bert phone. Bert Massey. You said Kai. <laughs> Bert Massey, the son of Bert Massey. No. Um, okay, so Zai yeah. is spelled X I. Yeah. The president or prime minister or whatever fucking fake position the dictator of China has uh, is Xi Jinping. Yeah. Spelled Mm XI. Now, they skip over this letter because they don't want it to be stigmatized. Yeah. Yeah, They don't want to agitate. They don't want to. That was their literal answer. They're like, we don't want to. We don't want to. We're fine with it being the South African. Yeah. You stigmatize South Africa instead of China. If I'm the CEO of Delta, I'm like, what the fuck are we doing, bro? Yeah. Corona, corona beer? <laughs> beer. We've been stigmatizing this whole time. We basically put Corona through the fucking, uh, what is it called? Bankruptcy? Bankruptcy. Yeah. Corona was paying us to promote it. Yeah. <laughs> Remember when they gave us co- cases of Corona beer? They're like, please, just put it on Corona's Got Talent. We'll do yeah. anything to get out of this thing. They literally almost went bankrupt because we call it the coronavirus. Yeah. Okay? Delta. Yeah. Same fucking thing. Yeah. We still wrote Delta. Yeah. But still, it's absolute bullshit. And the second that they could agitate... China, daddy, daddy immediately bends the fucking knee. You know, for a fact, if Trump called the strain or the tr- uh, if Trump's last name was some fucking uh, letter of the uh, Greek alphabet, they would have named that shit after him. 100%. And he would have owned it, too. Probably 100 percent. Can I say another unfair thing that what? Trump did when Trump had a travel ban? Everybody lost their fucking minds. You can't. This is this is not enough to institute a travel ban yeah, for a whole yeah, country. Yeah, yeah. All right, fine. This is a virus. However, what we are seeing is the symptoms are very mild. Very mild is what the South African do- uh, doctor said, and we're we're banning co- the whole country from traveling over very mild COVID. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. So it seems like there's a conspiracy here, and I want to get to Mark about this because we can get into the conspiracy corner and figure out exactly why we're mm. making such a big deal about this. But what I think, real quick before we go there, what I think is very interesting is, and maybe this is part of the conspiracy. And I tweeted about this the other day and got in whatever interesting reactions, but. I think what we're seeing is a very brilliant tactical play by China. Mm -hmm. America has always used freedom internationally as a tool to weaken the control of tyrannical governments Mm -hmm. over their people. Right. We have freedom here. We're like, yo, you guys deserve free. Wait, you're not free, but you're humans. You should be free. Go watch this movie that shows how awesome freedom is. Go watch these music videos that show how awesome freedom is. You guys should be able to be free too. You should be able to free wear whatever you want, do whatever you want, live however you want with your life. You deserve freedom, right? And it's a great tool. And it's a really great tool because anybody who sees freedom goes, I would like some of that. Nobody ever goes, I want more rules. Yeah. No one sees a movie about North Korea and they're like, that seems fun. Right. I would like rules. 100%. I would, oh, no one sees a fucking World War II movie and the Gestapo is showing up to your house. You're like, that's awesome. Hitler. Yeah. Someone checking on me. Yeah. Never once. Right. Freedom is so fucking tantalizing. So if our most powerful tool in the culture war is freedom, they have to find a way to handicap the freedom. Mm. What if... What if, hypothetically, they leaned into and promoted the extremes of that freedom so that we would have to limit our own? What do you mean? You are free, Mm. for example, to be 75 different fucking genders. Yeah. You're free to identify as um, a shoe. Mm -hmm. You're basically saying like a psyop to use freedom against people. And now you're going to force the American government to be like, well, you're not that free. Yeah. Uh, there's a limit to the freedom. Right. You don't go too far with this fucking freedom. What if they continue to lean into the extremes of whatever the fuck that we want to do here, and we should be able to do it because we're free, right? Mm -hmm. To create that sort of, that, I I don't want to call it like, um, uh, I don't want to say, I don't want to say there's like dissent, but this beef to continue to, to, to prop up this beef from different sides on both the extremes on what you should be able to so do. So you're saying they're propping up this, the, the arguments. If I was them, I would. Yeah. Who benefits so. the most from it? Us? No. Yeah. We're fighting amongst ourselves. We can't fight anybody else. Yeah. I would lean into anything. I would lean into anything that causes some sort of uh, discord. Is that the word I'm looking Dis- for? Uh, Dissonance. Yeah. Dissonance. I think discord is the word. Whatever. I would yeah. lean into anything I possibly could. Right. And... Essentially, what you're doing, if you're leaning into the woke side, which I'm sure they would, and you lean into the opposite of woke, whatever it is, but if you're leaning into the woke side, 
right? Like, think about that. If I'm, if I'm China, right, and I'm going to use wokeness as a tool against America, that's brilliant. Hey, I'm going to protect any criticism of China by calling it racist. Mm-hmm. Hey, we call this the China virus. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. That's racist. Yeah. You could be stigmatized. People are going to get beat up in the streets because of this. Mm-hmm. And you do anything that you possibly can to eliminate any criticism of China, the country. Yep. yep. By leaning into those people in America that are that are pushing this progressive agenda of, hey, we cannot do anything racist. Words are violence. If you are critical of China in any way, that could reflect on Chinese people that are here in America or Asians are here in America. So let's stop that criticism entirely. If there's a UK strain, by all means, criticize the UK. If there's a the, the, the South African strain, by all means, criticize. If there's an Indian strain, by all means, criticize that. But any sort of Chinese criticism of the government could reflect poorly on Chinese people. Therefore, we shouldn't do it. Yeah. Yeah. I would think even another way to do it is if we are, if we're playing conspiracy theorists, if we're ad- like addicted to freedom, we love freedom, what if there's a virus that gets spread that the government is forced to limit everyone's freedom? That yeah. would cause a lot of unrest. If the mandates are you have to wear masks all the time, you have to get vaccinated, you have to do this, you have to do that. It's so ingrained in our DNA to be free that a lot of people are going to be like, no, fuck that. And then they have a problem. You have used the freedom against America because they had to limit the freedom. Mm. So now there's uh, dissonance, I guess would be the better mm. word, right? dissonance with, within yeah. the government. Like, I fuck these guys, dude. They're, they're limiting my freedom. Mm. They're my enemy now. Because mm. I, can, I can definitely see how I always thought it was like politicians who were beholden to daddy, China, yeah. were like, hey, leaning into how, how dare Trump call it. The China virus. And then everything else, like, who gives a fuck? I got to make sure China's protected because we need them. So that's what I thought it was. And then that just kind of filtered in. And I didn't see China leaning into it, but they could. I just don't. That's what I would do. Yeah. That's what I would do. Anytime you're critical of China. I mean, low key, this is is done with uh, Jews in Israel. It's like anytime there's a criticism of Israel, Mm -hmm. it often gets turned into anti-Semitism. Right. Now. Are there people who are critical critical of Israel that are anti Semitic? Yeah. Absolutely. You might even make you might even make the case that it's ninety five percent, maybe ninety nine. You can make that case, but there is also a percentage of people like the Israelis that are critical of their own government. They could have nothing to do with Israel Palestine. It could literally just be like, yo, the fucking taxes in Israel are crazy high. Mm-hmm. Like when I was there, that's what they were saying. The taxes are crazy high, mm-hmm. right? Are they anti Semitic? Of course not. No. But when it's tied in, mm-hmm. now all of a sudden you have to be really careful about what you criticize about the country yeah. because you could become hateful as well through it. I think if we're criticizing China and the way they handle COVID, I think that it's completely reasonable. I don't think there's anything If you about can't that. see the difference between the Chinese government and Chinese people, you're a fucking retard. I can't. You're an idiot. <laughs> no. You're an idiot. <laughs> no, no. It's the complete... As a matter of fact, the Chinese government does more shit to Chinese people than any fucking yeah. black guy on a subway. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You want to talk about harm? Yeah. Chinese government harming mad Chinese people. Yeah. Fuck the Chinese government because yeah. I love Chinese people. Yeah. Mm. That's interesting. Okay, Mark, give us the conspiracy theory about the Omicron variant. So there's a few different ones that have been kind of percolating. Basically, people are looking at it like, oh, they're just going to kick up any new strain to try to enact more government control. So, like, the New York mayor basically said, we're going to do emergency orders because it's oh coming. God, dude, oh so God. that basically gives the government locally and in different countries more rule, less restrictions. They don't have to go through the same, you know, judicial and democratic process because it's an emergency and they're basically using this, like the old saying, don't let any good crisis go to waste. Mm. They're using this thing, blowing it up bigger than it actually is to then get more control. The other thing that people are saying is it's possible that once, in America at least, once the boosters are now available for everyone, basically stoking enough fear about the new variant so that they to get, get boosters. That, that then I people are going to go get more boosters, make more money for the pharmaceutical companies that are then ki- doing kickbacks with the media and with that the politicians. I Son, I believe in that. That I believe. Mm-hmm. I believe in that because literally someone close to Dove got COVID even though they were vaxxed. Okay? Their hubby also got COVID even though they were vaxxed. Bad COVID? No. Okay. Fair but enough. they got it again. Yeah. So I jumped to the conclusion that this was the new one. This is the Omicron. Yeah. I immediately told my parents, I was like, yo, y'all should get the booster. Right. Because I don't want my fucking parents to die because there's this new COVID that came around. And I didn't research it. I didn't look at what they, the health minister said yeah. in South Africa. They basically said it's mild symptoms. Yeah. Right? 
Um, Which is the suggestion for most viruses, like we've talked about before, like as it mutates, it becomes more uh, transmittable, but less virulent. So it doesn't kill all the hosts. Right. So basically, and, and I think it was you maybe when we were discussing this a little bit yesterday, was it you who was saying like, this is the perfect oh, type of Oh, I think I was COVID? saying it. Oh yeah. Doug yes, said Doug this said yesterday. That, yeah. It was brilliant. He was like, yo, this is the perfect thing. We go, what? And he goes, if there's a COVID that everybody gets, but it doesn't kill you like on some chicken pox shit. It's like, we're done. Yeah. Everybody yeah. gets it. Everybody builds up the antibodies. Whether you're vaxxed or not, doesn't matter because you're going to have natural immunity after having it. Yeah. This is the perfect type of COVID. Yeah. Why are we stopping South Africa yeah. from bringing it over? Run no. it. Yeah, dude, I do not care. Honestly, if you haven't gotten COVID by now, you're probably a fucking loser. You got no friends. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah. Also, if you get it, it's like saying there's a new strain of runny nose. I don't care. Yeah. If it don't kill me, I don't care. It's yeah. the flu. I ain't give a fuck about bird flu. I ain't give a fuck about pig flu. I don't give a fuck about bat flu. Mm. I'm good. Mm. And what made me suspicious with the booster shit was they were like, get, get your booster now. Yeah. And then I'm seeing news stories that uh, Moderna and Pfizer will have booster uh, boosters that are like prepared for the Omicron virus within three months. Variant within three months. So why would I get the booster now Bro. if in three months they're going to be ready for the variant? Bro, it's know, just like, yo, yeah. no. You know, I realize, man, and this is where, like, I wonder, like, what, how much blame you can give media. But when you start positioning, and this is also politician, but when you start positioning, this is the overreaction of politicians to new variants and the virus in general. When you start positioning the COVID deaths as the responsibility of Trump, the next person in office or the governors of uh, each state are going to feel accountable for those deaths. Mm. So if it's not the Makes virus sense. killed 100,000, it's Trump killed 100,000 yeah. by the way he handled the virus. Now, if you're Biden, you're like, oh, you're not going to put these bodies on me. Yeah. Shut down South Africa. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you're the governor of California, the governor of New York, you're like, oh, what? I got the subway. Everybody's in the subway. Everybody's about to go to hang out with their family for Christmas. You're not going to put these bodies mm -hmm. on me. When you start reporting the deaths as the responsibility of the politician in charge, this is the natural reaction. And even blame them shits on the fucking virus. Even beyond the virus, which is definitely true, but Trump in general is so radioactive. Any similarity you have to Trump, you can't do that. Yeah. You can't be anything like Trump in any way. So that's even more so like, all right, let's shut everything down, but I don't care. Yeah. I do believe in the vaccine, but you don't gotta get a fucking booster for Omicron. Fuck that. Yeah. yeah. Fuck that. That's that point on that. No, it was a uh, that's what the experts are saying, that right now Delta is 90% of the world, and it's deadly as other ones were. So if mm. this one becomes mild, so I'm not a doctor recommending anyone get COVID, but nah, get are saying, the virologists are saying they're <laughs> cautiously optimistic that if Om the Omicron variant is less pathogenic but more transmissible, allowing Omicron to replace Delta, this would be positive I'm news. I'm optimistic. Here, Cautiously is a word for <laughs> pussies. I'm optimistic. <laughs> if you haven't gotten COVID yet, you're a fucking loser. Go get that Omicron. You ain't got no fucking <laughs> friends. <laughs> Super you ain't got no people. family to catch it from. You <laughs> no. a fucking loser unless you got autoimmune or some shit. <laughs> You got a valid reason that you got to be careful. Be careful. But if you're just some fucking cuck in a house, yeah. go get COVID. What if you want to just get the booster? Then you a cuck. <laughs> why? Why have you? Why are you going to tell your parents to get the booster? Yeah. I don't. I want to get the booster yet. At least let them I got prepare my dad the for third fucking. One already. It's if it's been eight months. I don't think you need a booster. Wait, you got a booster? No, my dad got a. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I would let my parents get a booster. I don't too. think you need one in like eight months. Wait a year at least. Like we're just gonna do eight months, and then they're gonna have this fucking medicine eventually. That is. Like uh, the antiviral pill that yes. yeah, Merck has, but the crazy thing is that they just still won't tell us what our natural immunity uh, that we developed is worth. Because they sell more vaccines this way. That's bro. just a they're shit hustling. That pisses me off. And once that data shots. comes out, that we were good the whole time. Yeah. Mm. But if people want to get the booster, I'm like, yeah, do whatever you want. Yeah, do it. You're just a cuck. <laughs> You're like the guy wearing a mask. To order a salad no. for three minutes. If a guy you're wants to wear a mask, I'm like, yeah, go yeah, wear a mask. Yeah, you do it, but you're a cuck. Okay, maybe. That's no, what I'm no, saying. No, no, no. Uh, I, I don't think that you're a cuck at a certain age. All right, fair. I think if you're our age getting the booster, you're a fucking But also, loser. I don't know someone's yeah, disability. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's... I was in a zone. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> He's back. <laughs> but I don't know someone's disability. No, someone's no, sick. I'm not, like, talking about I'm not talking about people who are fucking crippled or whatever. Yeah, pre-existing, yeah. autoimmune, you got any of that shit? Get, I'm talking be about safe. normal, healthy people. Under 40. Yeah. That are getting a booster. Yeah, under 40, under 40 or something like that, getting a booster. Come on, bro. Like, what are you doing? Like, that's some fucking loser Do you feel shit. the same way about the yeah. flu shot? I never have gotten a flu shot in my life. But if someone under 40 gets a flu shot, are yeah, you like... Yeah, you're a loser. <laughs> Get the flu. All right. 
Just get yeah. the flu. You ever had the flu? Say what? You ever had the flu? Oh, Dude, that <laughs> shit is brutal. Is it though? Yes. I can't wait till he you gets the flu. You gonna say the flu is brutal while we're having a pandemic? <laughs> flu? Hey, real talk. <laughs> this is brutal. Supply issues. Is brutal. It's so brutal. We talk about Jordan. We go, man, Jordan's a goat for playing through the flu. If it's, is it brutal well, or is it not? Over and nobody believes he really <laughs> had the flu, dog. Come on. Because bro. if he really had the flu, he wouldn't have been able to make it. He wouldn't have been able to play that game. He really had the flu. Exactly. Flu let you up. Regular flu, probably worse than regular COVID. It, COVID just kills way more people when it gets bad. It gets worse. But I, I think I like an average flu, average, average sort of COVID. Let's be honest about COVID. The reason it's an issue is, is the duration. If it was a day or two, you'd be fine. But this shit is 10 days. Like, I was... Uh, how long were y'all out for COVID? Yeah, like I, was, I, got, I got it the least bad out of everybody I gave it to, which is kind of... I felt bad about that. <laughs> how, when you had COVID... When I had COVID, it wasn't it sort even of felt that like bad, the, but it was just forever. I was forever. like, fuck You mad this. tired for like five tired. days. Tired. I got emotional in that pool house after yeah. day six. It's like you ever pull a muscle and you're just like, still... <laughs> Like yeah. four days later, you want to just go work out. You're like, still, yeah. my hamstring is still fucked up. I can't do shit. That's COVID. Every time I hurt my body, that's it's. I'm shocked how long it's. <laughs> like two weeks like this. Yeah. <laughs> so what's going on here? So yeah, I think that's the biggest. Whatever the fuck, COVID's done. <laughs> COVID's done. I haven't worn a mask indoors anywhere. Like I don't. Son, they no made me do that shit anymore. at a restaurant. So like, which restaurant? Sweet greens. And that's they took not, out indoor not seating. A, you're not a restaurant. They took out indoor seating so we can't eat. I got to wear a mask to look at you for three minutes and order a tub fucking look, put a rugel in it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like I, I think when it comes to, to most places now, like just walking around, going to store, shopping, that kind of shit, like nobody asked for a mask. Son. And I don't know if the policy changed. Like maybe the policy changed in New York or something like that. I didn't know about it. But literally the other day... I was walking around, not a single request for a mask in any store that we went to or restaurant that we went to. Well, there's no mandate for masks, I don't think, inside. There used to New be. New York City did. New York Every City. Every single place you go in. To de Blasio's credit. To de Blasio's yeah. credit, when a lot of other people were doing mask mandates, he was like, I do not want to do a mask mandate. I just think more people should get vaxxed. Which is fine. Get the vax and wear a mask. So they don't both even ask crazy. for vax anymore at these places. Like, <laughs> restaurants do because I think it's like part of the code. Yeah. But like... Any like clothing store we walk into, they can't enforce it. Now, some cities, I think Chicago still had the mask mandate. Honestly, if you have a because mask they didn't mandate, have vax mandate, I think it, if you yeah. have a mask exactly. mandate and a vax mandate, they don't have vax in Chicago. Crime right? should mm. go up in your city. If that, if that's <laughs> what? if you have a vax mandate and a mask mandate, crime should go up in your city. Why is that? Because you just forcing, you just daring motherfuckers to rob you. Hey, Kate, come in, conceal your identity the entire time you're here. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Maybe as crime goes up, they'll have less mass mandates. Maybe this is a Republican ploy. Maybe yeah. they're trying to get people to stop doing mass psyop. mandates, it's and they're like, "Let's just rob motherfuckers with these masks on." Yeah, uh, agent provocateurs. Yeah, they're robbing yeah, people yeah. with masks agent on. Agent provocateurs. Yeah. Asian yeah, provocateurs, bro. I believe in Asian provocateurs for sure. <laughs> I said agent. I said agent. Yeah, that's what I said. Asian uh, provocateurs. You keep on saying Asian, bro. Come on. I don't see a difference. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. We're going to take a break for a second because I got to make sure that you guys are getting all the hydration that you need. Okay? And part of that is using the performance-enhancing drugs for hydration known as liquid IV. This is what it's all about. Get three times the hydration in the exact same amount of liquid that you're consuming. This is a no-brainer. If you could have three cups of water by taking one, wouldn't you do that? Well, guess what? You fucking can, and it's with Liquid IV. Of course, they've got the amazing flavors. Of course, it's healthy. Of course, it contains five essential vitamins, more vitamin C than an orange, as much potassium as a banana. Of course, it's healthier than the sugary sports drinks, no artificial flavors or preservatives, and less sugar than an apple. Of course, it's made with clean ingredients, non-GMO, vegan, and free of gluten, dairy, and soy. Of course. Of course, it's got the optimum, optimal ratio of glucose, sodium, and potassium and delivers water and nutrients into the bloodstream. Yes, we all know this as facts, but here's the thing. This company right here is donating 4 million servings in response to COVID-19. Products are being donated to hospitals, first responders, food banks, veterans, and active military. But I know you don't give a fuck about that at all. What I know is that you give a fuck about being hydrated. You know you're going out for a big night of drinking. You want to make sure that you stay hydrated. We all know the benefits of that, okay? You know if you're going to sleep and you just had a lot of fucking soy sauce for dinner and you're going to be parked, you got to up that motherfucking hydration so you don't wake up the next morning feeling like shit. And you could do that with liquid IV. And you know what else you could do? You could get 
25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code flagrant at checkout. Now, you could also grab it. You know, uh, at Walmart, if you want, that's possible. Or you can go to liquidiv.com, use the promo code FLAGRANT, get that 25% off. Better hydration when you're using the promo code FLAGRANT. Remember, at liquidiv.com. Now, let's get back to it. And real quick, just to wrap up the whole, like, you know, media responsibility or whatever the fuck it is, like... I don't know if media has a responsibility. I think they do, but maybe their responsibility is just to make money for their shareholders. And we hold them to a higher... Uh, you know, level of uh, integrity because they're supposed to deliver the news. No, I do. I hold them to a higher. You are fucking news. If sure. you're, yeah. Sure, sure. It's like saying a hospital's primary responsibility is to uh, deliver money for their shareholders. No, you're a hospital. You have a different responsibility. That's Our, true. we got to make money, but we also got to make people laugh. That's true. Your but primary America, responsibility. Though, that's like the point of America is like, yo, get your bread. And I think, I think as we get older, the kids will have a different uh, outlook on the news. And they'll look at it like, here's the information for right-wing people. Here's the information for left-wing people. And I think that there really won't be a place for just the information. And, and maybe there never was. Maybe we just thought there was, and it was kind of exposed. If you want to say, like, one thing Trump really did or the Trump era really did is kind of open our eyes to, like, what news was. Mm -hmm. And I think Jon Stewart definitely started that when he started exposing Fox News, but we never really saw CNN be exposed as mm -hmm. well. And I think that that was like the equal and opposite reaction. But a perfect example of this is like the way that the news is covering this like Waukesha guy. Oh, the yeah, guy yeah, who yeah. drove yeah. the car intentionally yeah. into the people so he could murder them. Yeah. And he killed six of them. Yeah. And the way that the news has covered this is this, like it was the car's fault. there had been all these tweets that were just like. And it's a really interesting way of like looking at what they're doing and like why why they're doing it like this. So it's a, a guy named Daryl Brooks. Black dude uh, is out on bail from trying to run over his ex-girlfriend with the same car, has warrants for some maybe sex assault stuff in like Nevada or something like yeah. that. Like, that's just a bad fucking guy. Probably yeah. dealing with mental health shit, right? Yeah. There's a yeah. reason why you're doing all this stuff. It's fucking sad. But what's really interesting is if this dude was a black Muslim guy, this is a terror attack, the way that the news were reporting. Right. Mm. He's not Muslim, so it's not a terror. If he's a white guy, it's a lone wolf mental health thing. Yeah. And then there would be people being like, why aren't we calling this terrorism? Exa and then exactly, there would be left-wing people going, why isn't this terrorism? Just because it's a white guy. The, the, mo the, the number one terror group in America is white males. Yeah. You'd have that whole conversation going around it. It's a black dude who knowingly targeted a group of people and drove a fucking car into it, killing them. People from eight years old to, I think, 91 years it's old. really sad. This guy is fucked up. killed almost as many people as Travis Scott. It's really fucked yeah. up. <laughs> yeah. Really fucked he up. Really did that Travis Scott thing. <laughs> Travis Scott didn't drive the fucking car. Yeah. He just said, come here. Yeah, he just said, stop the ambulance. I got a concert to do. Yeah, he had to hit the robot. Yeah. So, <laughs> but like, it's just interesting to see how people are reacting to it. And mm -hmm. when it's a black dude... They really don't know what to put it in, what category to put it in. Right. So it's just like, the car did it. Yeah. It, a van hit it. Not yeah. guy targets group of people and yeah. runs. I can't them over sensationalize the car. this as easily. Yes. Is it possible that those like the way that the story's framed just makes less money? You yeah. know what I mean? Like, if it's a I, white yeah, dude that 100%. does it, and they're like, oh, we can antagonize white people and get white people riled up, that'll give us more money. Mm -hmm. If we can yeah. say it's like a Muslim thing, we can terrify people with this Muslim Islamophobia thing, that'll make us more money. Yeah, you said but it just, much more completely than I said it when I said they can't sensationalize it. It's like, yeah. we can't, it's got to have legs. People got to be able to sink their fucking teeth into it. Right. So if it's a white guy, I, and they're like, our audience, are they going to want to click on a story of like, lone black guy kills white people? Like, That's I don't know thing. if our audience wants to click that. A woke audience is not going to want to click on the most sensational title is black man uh, attacks Christmas parade with or Christmas fair or whatever the mm -hmm. fuck it was. Uh it kills eight people. The most sensational title for one specific side. For the right wing. Yeah. Right? But for the left wing, the left wing, some left wing like woke mom doesn't want to read about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They want to imagine that this could never happen. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God, this is such, such a tragedy. You want to act like the steering went off. Yeah. Like yeah. when they reported like that, like the van, this yeah. is an accident. Please be a Camry. Please be a Camry. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> or Tesla. Yeah, right? Yeah, like yeah, something yeah. there was auto drive and yeah, it ran yeah. into people. What a tragedy. This is so horrible. Right. Right? And... Of course, they're feeding their base, but I don't know. Maybe they was reported differently with the right wing outlets. I didn't see. Like, how did like Newsmax or whatever that one? Well, I mean, extreme? they. I think they lean more into the racial element, and then they talked about the silence from the left. Of course, which so is so. valid, yo. 
That's valid. The left has been silent. This guy killed eight people in a fucking car Injured trying 60. to enjoy. Injured 60. I didn't even know that. I didn't even heard that. That's wild. Yeah. These but, are people going to a fucking Christmas parade. That's horrendous. But then people on the left will talk about the right silence. Hey, when, how many people died in the Boston Marathon bombing? I don't know, actually. Probably more than eight. But if it's not, I, I got a great point. <laughs> if it's not, that was a fucking story. They made movies about that. Yeah. Because they were Muslim. Because they were Muslim. And I guess a bomb is more Three sensational. Deaths. Three, Three deaths. deaths. A lot of body maiming. Oh, I'm sure. And in that sense, I, I'm not trying to measure whatever, but yeah, eight people, people died here, here. 60 people injured here. Probably body maiming. And nobody's talking about that. Where's the fucking movie about that? Yeah. We're not, not even not a movie. We're not talking about it. Mm -hmm. I didn't know 60 people were injured until you said it. And I'm a guy that's pretty outside of the news. I'm not doing deep dives on anything unless we're talking about it on this podcast. Yeah. But they have a scapegoat for those things. They're like, oh, Islam in America, what's the deal? Islam is perfect because it gets both people in. It allows the right wing to sink their teeth into it and the left wing to say, don't blame the religion. Yeah. And I also think this is obviously the overcorrection that we always talk about. Like, there's been a history of like, oh, put the race of the guy. Like, black guy does this. Black guy kills yeah, kid. Yeah, sure, that's They fair. take the picture of Trayvon where he's holding the gun or whatever. And then they're like, all right, let's overcorrect where we're not really going to talk about this uncomfortable thing that there is like maybe a racial element. Yeah. <laughs> Because all the years that we've been stoking this racial fire because it got us clicks, now That's we're going to overcorrect. It's like the news has white guilt. They're yeah. like, man, we always put the worst examples of black people up for fucking 60 years. Yeah. We, now we can't keep doing that. Here's, you know? here's the thing. They don't have white guilt. They have no guilt about anything. They just know that their viewers... Viewers do. have white guilt. Yeah. And yeah. the viewers are not going to click on a story that they don't want to know to be true. Mm -hmm. That's the fucked up mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. It's we're clicking on things that confirm our beliefs. What do we always say? Like, uh, people don't want information. They want confirmation. Right. Islam is bad. Tell me why. Yeah. Oh, this, this Muslim dude drove a car into people? See? Right. Told you Islam was bad. Mm -hmm. Right? They're not, we're not educating ourselves about this, but this doesn't fit any of those things yeah. for CNN or right. for the Washington Post. Mm -hmm. It doesn't fit any of those things. So they have to talk about it. But how can we talk about it in a way that would satisfy our people? Oh, this poor guy is a victim of his car being shitty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The van did it. Mm -hmm. Not this guy who was let out on bail. Like, it exposes so many things. It exposes the bail system. Like, this, like, super, um, maybe that goes back to the DA thing that, that Dove is talking about. But, like, I think the DA had even said, like, uh, that, let me not misquote. But it exposes a lot of issues with... Um, with, with dealing with like repeat felons yeah. in general. Like this guy should be locked up. Now I would say there's probably the inverse thing happening. And right. I can't say this specifically. I don't have an example, but I'm fairly confident that it probably exists in some sense yeah. where let's say you have a cop that is known for having police brutality, but keeps on getting off, blah, blah, blah. And then eventually he kills a black guy. Yes. Obviously, CNN is going to pick that up and be like, yo, this is outrageous. Our audience is going to love it. And I imagine that right wing outlets would be fairly silent on it. 100%. Or if they talk about it, they wouldn't talk about the previous police yeah. brutality yes. or they might try to cover Can, it in some I, different way. I want it to be clear the way we're talking about it. They're both full of both shit. Both sides. Exactly. Full of shit. We're just giving an example of the left being full of shit. Yes. Mm -hmm. Especially after the left stoked this conversation about Rittenhouse and literally convinced almost everybody that this kid was 100% guilty of killing. They didn't say it, but black people... If everybody thought Rittenhouse killed black people... I did not know he killed white people. Exactly. And they did that on purpose because what's more exciting? Yeah. Oh, 100%. Little white kid goes to Black Lives Matter parade. And pra I keep calling him parade. <laughs> <laughs> black Pride parade. Yeah, yeah. Black Lives Matter march and then kills three people. Yeah. You know for a fact they knew that they weren't black, but they were like, hey, should we say that they're white people? Hell Let's no. Let's just not Let's say it. That fucking we'll cut white. some news out of the news. Exactly. Yeah. I just think it's a sad state of like the media and like it's not really a, to me a really like a left or right issue. It's just the state of media now, is just, especially when it's like privatized and like pushed by like. Yeah, it's not a left or right issue. Games. It's a state it's a, of media. Yeah, but like the chicken or that's the chicken or the egg. Like who creates this left or right? To me, like, I don't think it's, it's a self feeding thing, I think. Yeah. That, but, okay, but like is it the media that's creating the identity of the left and the right? Or are they feeding the identity of the left or the right? Feeding. I think both. I think it's a fly. But they also create it. I think they also are out there saying this is what you should believe in. Oh, okay. I see what you're and saying. And these are the things you should care about. And reinforcing the things that you might believe in and yeah. might care about. And now all of a sudden that becomes your identity. Yeah. And it's both. You, There's all these conservatives that are against critical race theory. So Why? They don't know what it is. They're just like, I don't like it. But why is it even brought I've up? I've been told not to like because it. Because Fox News was like, yes. yo, we can use this to stoke They say people white people are evil. Views. They so, say, yeah. This is why... This is why I think people have become 
for a large part, apolitical now. It's because the pandemic caused so much confusion. With Trump, it was so easy to know what you liked and what you didn't like. The Mm -hmm. decision was made for you. If you're a left-wing person, whatever Trump said he supported, you push back on. If you're a right-wing person, not all right-wing people, but if you're a Trump MAGA person, whatever Trump believed in, you found a way to defend it. Okay? It was so easy. And because of that, we were all so political. Because it was so easy to be political. You didn't have to do any research. What did Trump say? Oh, he likes that shit? Man, fuck him. Yeah. I remember my friends just regurgitating things because they knew that there was safety behind it. Yeah. Because they had a guy that was so polarizing and whatever he believed in was bad and whatever he was against was good. It was so easy to be involved in politics and people were involved in so many different things. He had an opinion on everything. He's gone. Pandemic comes out. All of a sudden, we're in fucking disarray. Think about it. Groups that are not supposed to agree on anything all of a sudden agree. Black people and MAGA, they're supposed to be diametrically opposed. What do they both agree on? That vaccine is some fuck shit. Mm. Right? Yeah. All of a sudden, you're starting to see different groups that do not get along ever kind of agreeing on shit. How do we ra- how do we adjust? How do I feed them information? How do I even talk about things? Oh, critical race theory. Who's this supposed to ho- help? Who's this supposed to support? I don't have somebody to tell me to like it or not like it. Yeah. I'm done. I'm checked out. Remove me from it. Fuck all that politics shit. That's going to take too much research, too much information. If I'm a liberal person and I want to tell you to get vaccinated, but I could offend black people by that, which is something I don't want to do as a liberal person, you know what? Zip, zip, I'm out. Mm-hmm. I'm done. I'm not even involved in the conversation anymore. Mm-hmm. And I think that's how you've seen like a depolitification or a, a, a de, uh, like a kind of a disinterest in politics of late. Because we don't know where we Where stand. we should stand safely. Stay, stand safely. Okay. Mm. All right. There was safety in just going, yeah, I agree with everything Trump says or I disagree you with everything. Stand with your tri- it's very easy to stand with your tribe. Now people don't even know what their tribe's supposed to like. Yeah. I'm liberal. Should we get vaxxed? Yeah. Well, my black friends don't want to do it. And I'm supposed to support black people or else I'm racist. Fuck. I'm just going to be quiet. Yeah. And you think it's hard for the media to craft an identity so that's why they stick to these stories? The pandemic threw everything. I think the media would have done Rittenhouse regardless. I just think people would have been very clear on where they stand based on how, where Trump stood. I don't think the media has shifted a ton. And I think the media is like drug dealers, where it's like, okay, these guys might be interested in this, but I'm just going to keep giving them stronger and stronger doses of that drug, which is liberal shit mm-hmm. or conservative shit, mm-hmm. and then just take them further and further away from everything. Can you see how like the, the pandemic has created situations that aren't as cut and dry? Oh, absolutely. And I think to your point... Now that Trump is there or Trump, Trump is gone, uh, we're like, exa- uh, sorry to interrupt, but like perfect example, like don't tell us what to do with our bodies. Yeah. Right. right. This is just repeat it. If you're a liberal, just repeat that shit. And you're right in any liberal circle. I could do whatever I want with my body. Right. My body, my choice. My body, government. Don't tell me what to do with my body. Right. Every liberal will agree with you before 2020. Is that yeah. when the pandemic started? Right. But before 2020, go girl. Yes. Yeah. We'd like you to take this vaccine. Matter of fact, you need to take this vaccine. Okay. It's not your body, your choice. Oh, all right. Now, trying to poke holes in that, could you say the same thing 30, 40 years ago even about conservatives? I hate big government. The government's not going to tell me what to do. I don't want government. So even before this Trump shit, it was like, oh, but abortions, yeah, you can't. You don't have control of your own body. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Censorship kind of flipped. Censorship, like, Censorship flipped, flipped so hard, dude. Yeah. We are the soccer moms we used to make fun of. Yeah. That's what liberals have become. Yes. I said we, I don't know why, but liberals have become the, the moms burning the M&M CDs that were like, yo, that's so fucking stupid. Society, liberal society has become that. So it has got a little bit more confusing. You understand yes. kind yeah. of what I'm saying? Also, yeah, they're yeah. removing people from like their immediate in-person communities. Mm. Like if you're like dealing with people, like talking to people at church, talking to people at the grocery store, talking to people at your kid's baseball game, like you're kind of realizing like, oh yeah, most people are like kind of you know, not super strong feeling about most issues and you kind of negotiate and be like, oh yeah, I kind of disagree, but I still like you, like whatever. And then to remove from that and sort of isolate into like much smaller little pods. And you're inundated with those new, like these opinions you agree with. It's just fucking, you're seeing all the time. Those extreme sticky versions of them online. Yeah. All you're digesting. And then on top of that, you don't even know what's real on the internet. Like, is this an actual person or is this just one guy with five accounts? Yeah. Is this like a Russian foreign agent coming in telling me shit? Chinese foreign agent coming in telling me whatever? Like, 
I have, you have no idea even who you're talking to or what the opinion it's is. It's easier just to remove yourself. Yeah. And also, there's going to be a little bit more of a regression to the mean in terms of, like, our lives are getting normal again. Like, mm. we have to understand, the Trump era, followed by the pandemic era, was so fascinating because Trump was just like the pandemic in that, like, the entire world was experiencing the same thing at one time. Canadians are protesting Trump. English people are protesting Trump. It's like, get a life. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. got nothing to do with you, you fucking loser. Yeah. <laughs> Sit back and enjoy the show. Yeah. Why are you getting... You got a fucking uh, a Trump balloon. Yeah. Also... In London. Yeah. Don't y'all got some shit to also, figure out? Like, aren't there still actual dictators? Like, I didn't see y'all protesting Idi Amin, and I'm sure there's still dictators left on Earth. You could not like Trump, but there's some fucking dictators He's out like there, bro. He's like top 10 best people <laughs> to run a country if you really want to go with all the people running countries. Like, probably, wait, I'm just saying, oh, think no, about it. Know about you don't that. think, how many countries there are in Europe? Maybe not. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of Europe. You know what I'm trying to say. Like, yeah. how many, there's like, how many decent countries that you could live if in? If you put him in the dictator column, he's probably... Oh, dictator is number one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you oh, have to have two. a dictator. Like, That's the guy. Leeway. But, but yeah, I guess what we're trying to say is like, there are many worse people that you could protest. Yeah. Yeah. But what he did is he had so much fucking attention then no matter where he went, there was a protest about him. The whole world was kind of experiencing him and whatever he believed or didn't believe in, they made their opinions based on that. Yeah. Everybody was reacting to Trump. And we're like, this could never happen again. There could be never be one thing in the world this polarizing again. Yeah. Boom. Pandemic. The whole world experiencing the same exact thing and now you inside. So you get removed from that life that you were talking about, that interpersonal life that you had with other people. Now we're going back to our normal lives. The things that actually bother us are like crime in L.A. if I live in L.A. Yeah. You know what's not bothering me? Some shit that happened in Waukesha. Mm -hmm. The average person is like, I don't even know what the fuck that is. I just know that when I was out at Sweet Greens the other day, there was a dude walking around. He had his hand in his pocket. And I'm like, is this motherfucker about to put me on World Star? <laughs> bother me? Want me in my fucking salad? Yeah. Right? Like that is your actual life now. You care about your life. Yeah. What's happening to you? What are the things that affect you? Now you have a fucking life again. Of course, you're going to become a little bit less uh, politi uh, politically uh, reactive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting time. It's like we're going back to normal. And I forgot that there was a normal. I forgot there was a time when motherfuckers didn't care about shit. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's interesting. Trump did that at the end of the presidency during COVID where he said, you know what? It's all on the states now. And then yeah. the states became the local government. Now people started caring about that again. And that yeah. kind of happened after he was like protecting himself. Yeah, he was yeah. like, y'all are going to fuck this up. You're not going to put these bodies on me. <laughs> yeah, they did that. They're like, 100,000 people have died under Trump's watch. He was like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, but, but 8,000 Michigan and 4,000 <laughs> Florida, 10,000 Texas. That's who dying. Yeah. You want to talk about media coverage? You want to talk about Ghislaine Maxwell? Oh. Okay. Bust it down for us, Mark. All right, so basically. What's the deal with this trial? So basically, Ghislaine Maxwell, is her trial is now starting. Uh, I actually, I think it started today and she's get basically getting tried in Brooklyn where she's being held and same place as Martha Stewart. Yep. Same okay. place as old Martha. And basically she's being tried for her connection to Jeffrey Epstein's, uh, crimes against young children mm -hmm. where basically he was exploiting women and like she was recruiting. Yeah. And using kids and she's not being charged with that. It doesn't seem like she's being charged with just the recruitment and the grooming of the young girls that Epstein was then exploiting and quote unquote trafficking. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Now, so, I want to throw out a couple headlines and hopefully you can offer some clarity. It has been said, and a lot of news has been made, out of the fact that this is not going to be a public trial mm -hmm. and that they're not going to be streaming this anywhere. Now, there's certain, there's certain trials that you can watch. Rittenhouse. Mm -hmm. Rittenhouse, we could watch. Yeah, OJ. OJ, yeah. we could yeah. watch. Why can we not watch Ghislaine? On the surface, it looks like, yo, they're protecting these fucking pedophiles. Right. They're finding a way. Yeah. Why can we not? So there's two things. One, to my understanding, this is a federal case, and federal yeah. cases are not televised. And Wisconsin allows you to televise a trial in the state of Wisconsin. So Rittenhouse, you can watch it and live stream. And that was a state case, And that was a state trial. a federal case. Federal, you cannot. Gotcha. Yeah. And then the second gotcha. piece is that there's a... This and, is what, and sorry, yeah. OJ was also a state also case. Also a state yeah. trial. The state of California and I'm versus sure OJ Simpson. they fucking yeah. love cameras in California. Yeah. Yeah. And so my understanding also is that there's a... At least what some of the media companies are saying is that they don't want to necessarily poison the jury 
by putting out too much information about the case at a federal level to then make it so that the jurors are not able to be selected. I hope these motherfuckers are poisoned. <laughs> yeah, yeah. By poison a jur- jury, what you're basically saying is not literally kill them, which we have to say now. These motherfuckers <laughs> be getting killed. Um, but like poison jury in terms of like make them feel a certain way. They have to be going to this... Poison their judgment against her. Exactly. Which we should do. <laughs> yeah, like, come on. The bitch was fucking the kids. Yeah. Woman the kids. She's a rapist. She's a rapist, bro. And probably uh, might be some bodies. Allegedly. Oh, I'm sure. Allegedly. Yeah. allegedly. Now, I don't know if she's actually getting tried for... We still for... gotta say allegedly for her. Yeah. I mean, sometimes, you take my allegedly out. Guilty. Bitch did it. She innocent, bro. <laughs> bitch for now. did it. Take she my innocent, allegedly bro. out. Bitch did it. I think she innocent. Bitch did it. Hey, throw that button out the fucking window. (laughs) Bitch did it. (laughs) Innocent. No, no, go on. So she, the first thing that happened was like, there was a bunch of like human rights attorneys in like Paris and New York that are basically fighting on her behalf, saying that she has like unfair and cruel conditions Uh, in prison. uh, Yeah. So like she's having to sleep under fluorescent lights. She's in solitary confinement and they're saying that it's cruel and unfair to do that to an innocent person. Ooh. So that was the first thing that came up. Other people were like, bro, you're in prison. Like... This is not as bad as the other prisons. Like, there are prisoners in jail right now that are not convicted that are having a worse time than you. Right. Like, so suck it up. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. then they're pointing at, like, the American prison system. And they're like, how unfair is this prison system? Blah, blah, blah. And they're wrapping it up in that. She also has, I think, pretty great attorneys. Yeah, yeah they're acting like she's not going to beat the case. Yeah. Why don't we just see where this money came from? Like, follow the money. Like, if she, didn't she have these big-ass accounts of like $20 million, $10 million in them? Do you I guys remember? I think the last thing I heard is her net worth is valued right now, like, on books, is, like, $22 million. Okay, so where does the $22 million come from? Like, you can figure that out. Money has to get transferred to your bank account. From where? Mm-hmm. Let's just follow that money. Mm-hmm. And if that money comes from a motherfucker that was at that island banging them kids, mm-hmm. we need to ask you why he gave you $10 million. Why did Prince Andrew give you $5 million so if now, that did happen? I think her defense, based off what I understand, is that basically they're going to say... That she, they're going to basically blame everything on Epstein. They're going to point to the empty chair and be like, yo, this guy did everything. He, she's actually a victim of Epstein. That yeah, Ep- Epstein yeah, like mentally that, manipulated yeah. her. Yeah, he yeah. was like gaslighting her. He like took her from her family, isolated her, blah, blah, blah. Didn't let her have contact with the outside world. The white woman defense. And then basically that she was recruiting young girls and she was talking to women to have him work for Jeffrey Epstein, either as masseurs, which isn't illegal to yeah. get a girl that's like, hey, do you want to be a masseuse? Either as nannies, which isn't illegal to say, hey, do you want to be a nanny? And basically bring women in that she did not know was going to be sexually exploited. So she was kidnapped as well. And yeah, emotionally so manipulated. On top of not knowing what she was yeah. actually doing, she yeah. was also a victim. Which and uh, also, and you know, if she if she only had some money to herself where she could leave this operation and and you know not continue working for him, that would mm-hmm. be pretty easy. But then maybe she's afraid of being like killed, etc. Yeah, I guess. Jeffrey and, Epstein's a crazy guy. He's a maniac. He's a psychopath, mm-hmm. and he is the reason why she's in the position. And that she's in. Uh, if she, you're gonna let her walk if you know if you think she has dirt on everybody and like a fucking. Uh, what do you call it? Like a dead man switch or whatever yeah, they call yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, Then you got to let her walk. That shit don't exist. You got to walk. <laughs> dead man switch, such bullshit. Everybody with dead man switch, nothing comes out, right? <laughs> Everything got got, ain't no dead man switch. They got to the dead man switch. They switched that shit off. How? The dead man switch is you die, it comes out. That's what they were figuring out while they were torturing them in that cell. Nah, bro. This is... And then they're also going to dispute what grooming is. So they're going to say, you groomed these young girls. You're going to be like, I talked to girls and hired them. That's grooming. Yeah. I didn't know what he was doing. I was a mentor to these women, and now I'm grooming them. There is an allegation that in the Epstein documentary, I think, on Netflix, that one of the girls was saying, she and Epstein raped me together. Yeah. So that's like a damage. Yeah, that was Virginia Jufre, who I don't think is actually involved in this current trial. Virginia Jufre is the one that was with Prince Andrew, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think she's one of the four... Uh, defendants? How the fuck not? Or not defendants? What yeah, is it? It, yeah. I don't understand. That's the big dog. We're waiting for another trial. Just yeah. try her for everything at once. Yeah, I don't know how that works. And that's the other thing that they could end up doing. They could, they could try her for specific things that she can get off. Mm. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like, uh, we don't even know if this is something recent or this is goes back to her time in like uh, what was it, West Palm, mm-hmm. or just Palm Beach? Okay, right. So like. I think it's Palm Ac- Beach. It's just, so this could be just Palm Beach. Right. And the accusations could be just Palm Beach. Right. And they could know that there's no proof of what she actually did in Palm Beach. It right. could have nothing to do with like luring bitches into the fucking Upper East Side place that they got. Right. So we're looking at this going, oh yeah, Ghislaine was with them throughout the entire time and they were in- in guilty of like luring these women in and having these sex parties and yada, yada, yada. 
They could be trying her for one year of shit that happened in Palm Beach, which is the most easy to... Beat. Um, what is it? Beat. Which, which could be the most easy to beat. Right. Mm. They potentially could also be trying to extradite her to England, where, where, where she's from originally. But also, mm. like, Epstein had a house in London where apparently some crimes occurred also, so they might be trying to create a case against her to extradite her. Mm. So there's, like, all these different things. This isn't the internet when They're it comes to, like... Girl, yo. Yeah, she's walking. Not this girl, yo. She, she walking. walking. She's walking. She's Possible. walking, yo. Possible. Name a girl. Like, how do we not know one girl who's going to stand trial? That's crazy. Also, we don't know one name. But I think they're trying to stay private. But we are. They already put out the video. They were already talking in front of the camera. Some of the, I think only one or two of them have like gone public with their names. The other two have like chosen to stay anonymous. Oh, I remember the girl with the crazy to- teeth, the crooked ass teeth. You remember that girl? You're talking about escaping Epstein from the documentary? Yes. I don't know how many of those women are the actual defendants. Why not? <laughs> yeah, why not? I don't like, understand yeah, why not. You don't go on Netflix and say you got raped, and then when it's time to deliver judgment for, to the rapist, you're not there. Also, how are you going to find? That shit. How are you going to find uh, jury members who are completely unfamiliar with this case? Mm. Everybody poisoned. Mm. We all got Netflix. We all had it during the pandemic. We watched everything. Yo, I got a real question for y'all. Do you think, okay, do you think the people that went to the island knew that they were underage? Yes. 100%? 90. I'm sure you found out somewhere along the way. Do you think that they knew that they were underage as much as someone who goes to like fucking Dominican Republic or Colombia for like bachelor parties and doesn't ask the age of the girls that show up? Interesting. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, like, you hear all these stories of, like, girls that, like, oh, yeah, I started stripping when I was 17. Like, nobody at a strip club ever asked the girl no, who's true. tripping how old they are. That's now, true. I'm not trying to cap for the people that went to the islands. What I am trying to do is is understand intention. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if, like, for, I don't think Tiger Woods went. If Malcolm Gladwell, one of these motherfuckers, goes to the island, is he going, oh, this is the kid fucking island? I think if you've been there more than once, you've heard. Also, Fair if enough. you're going post 2008 when Epstein was convicted of also oh, fucking true, yeah, I think he was convicted of like molestation or like uh, like crimes against children, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, like I settled, can't associate went to with that guy. Yeah, hundred percent. Accused of crimes against children. Well, so you even know what yeah. time it is. But you prior know, to that, prior to that, may, there's plausible deniability. Yeah, at least but you can I be still ignorant. think you probably found out somewhere. I'm just saying, like, you never heard people saying they went to fucking Brazil and like, oh, the strip clubs are crazy. And it's like, are you IDing these bitches? Yeah. No, you're not. Yeah. Like you hear these crazy stories. Right? But this like, is different. This you is. Remember Obama started country. We remember Obama's like security went was in Brazil and they got caught going to the brothel or some shit. Mm, I don't remember. The Secret remember Service. That? Secret yeah. Service. They got caught going to the brothel. It's like you really think the Secret Service is IDing these Brazilian bitches? Like, you just assume a part of the institution. Is, like, but this is different. The rules are different, fam. <laughs> it could be 16 there. But this yeah. is. You all speak English. You, you all talk. Where, you, you know where you're from. You from America? Let me just get reactions. Mm-hmm. You're from America. You know the rules. 18 here. Do you mm-hmm. go by their rules over there? If you choose to, like I'm not saying it's ethical or not ethical, but like if you want to, if you're gonna go to some other country, drink when it's 18. It's like oh, it's illegal to drink in America when it's 21. I'm just saying. Okay, go. Yeah, this is America is what I was gonna say. And if you're in Brazil, it's a whole different culture, whole different language. I don't know how to communicate with these people. You're talking to American girls on Epstein Island for the most part. You can communicate with these people. If I'm having a conversation with a child, it's a lot easier to find out if we're having a conversation and this is a girl that speaks English. Brazil, you're just like, this is all different. I don't know what the fuck this she's saying. She doesn't know what I'm saying. I've never been in this country. The whole culture is different. I know there's strip clubs everywhere. I don't know if they're vetting. It's easier to find out when it's an American dude bringing you over to a place of full of Americans. Of course, it's easier to find out. There's no question about that. I just think that most people are willfully ignorant when they go to these places. Very willfully. They like, go to Brazil. They go to Colombia. They go to these places where, you know, you're going to go and there's girls. Cuba, Dominican Republic, where, like, there's just girls around. Like, I don't know if they're asking for birthdays and that kind of stuff like that. And I don't think that they're going there to fuck kids. Jesus. So it looks like the age of consent in Colombia is 14 years? Boy. Yeah. Now, based on your rules, yes. now, I know you're not saying this, but yes. based on what someone could interpret, you're saying, well, yeah, that's what it's okay over there. I, mean, I don't I, think you believe that. It violates no. my personal moral code, but like, and I think if someone does that, they're a scumbag. But also, like, if they're not breaking laws, what are you, you going to do against them? What's, so what I'm more talking about is the dudes that do, you know, their parties and shit. They go over there, and they're not even asking questions. There could be 16-year-old fucking girls 
They're just lined up and they out here going, Epstein wasn't killed. What is it? Epstein piece of shit. Epstein this. It's like, fam, you're doing the same thing yep. in Spanish. <laughs> I mean, at, you know the, I mean? Like, at the very least, I think guys in general are just ignorant, regardless of age, when they go to another country for sex tourism, that they're complicit in, like, sex trafficking. Yeah, you just want to fuck some Colombians, yo. Yeah. I'm in Colombia. I want to fuck some Latinas. I think they know if they're doing something If you fly into fuck fucking up. Palm Beach to fuck white girls, you know they're kids. You know what I mean? But they're going to an island. Where is this island? Full of white girls? That's not... Do you mean, like... <laughs> eh. I, to, I don't know. To me, the, I don't... I don't Think that white girls deserve to be fucked? No, girls, not at all. <laughs> not that at all. Weird. But I'm saying if you're flying to, if you're going to whorehouses in Colombia, Brazil, it's like, yo, I'm just trying to fuck some Latin. You women. already know you're doing something illegal. If you're flying See, to an island to I've, fuck a bunch of American girls, yeah, take yeah. race out of it, just American girls who speak English, yeah. I'm probably on an island for a weird fucking reason. Yeah. There's well, whorehouses no, around me everywhere, and I'm a powerful guy. I could access some high class bitches. Yeah. High class horse. Yeah, yeah. So why am I going to this island with American I'm girls? Not, I'm not. Uh, yeah. I'm saying I don't think they really have plausible deniability. Got you. I got you. I'm with you on that. I, I I'm just saying like, there's there's this huge outrage about the island and the girls, and it's disgusting. And we should be outraged. But we all know motherfuckers that go to places for sex tourism. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we all know motherfuckers who are not asking IDs at these places. Mm-hmm. Right. Those people are disgusted by Epstein. Yeah. yeah. They are repulsed by him. Think, think that he is a fucking monster. While they are filling the pockets of the Hispanic version of Epstein mm, okay. in these places. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm that's that's yeah. the thing that I find a little peculiar. Like, it, he's not the only one that got fucking teenagers yeah, yeah. banging adults. Right. So you're not as much trying to ex- exonerate the people who went to Epstein Island Bill Clinton, as- what a disgusting piece of shit for fucking teenagers on an island. Oh, when is your bachelor party? Oh, where are we going? Dominican Republic? Yeah. All right, bet. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, disgusting for fucking those young girls. But there are people out here that should not be, that should not be calling him out for it. Put it right. that way. Right. Mm-hmm. I think there's also a difference like being complicit in the sex trafficking and like doing the sex trafficking. Like I think those people should he's get saying, different jail sentences. Yeah, he's saying I think don't judge other Who motherfuckers. Who are you judging, like, Bill Clinton? Yeah. Who are you judging? <laughs> all these motherfuckers on the plane. Oh, yeah, I thought you were more exonerating the guys who went to Epstein Island as opposed to accusing these guys of being hypocrites. No, I'm with that. for me it's always the hypocrisy. Yeah, and if that wasn't clear, my bad. But it's just like you know you bet you know you specifically went to places. Because it was easy to fuck these bitches. Yep. And Whores. you know you're not asking the fucking price. Yeah. They also ask themselves probably like, they justify their own thing based off their own intention. Like this is like, you know, where they're like, oh, I'm going to South America to have sex with women. And I don't care really what their ages are. I'm not going to ID them, but I'm going there to have sex with women. Whereas these people are going to the island to abuse kids. That's true. But you are, to the point is that I've, that stuck with me, is you are still lining the pockets of their Epstein. Yeah, whatever. and they're also abusing kids. Like, yeah. Yeah. if you go to, like, South America, whatever. You got and like, it in your head, they're women, but they're kids. Potentially. Yeah. And I bet you, there's some are kids and some are adults. Mm-hmm. And I bet you there's probably motherfuckers that went to Epstein and shit like, hey, I'm going to this island to fuck women. Because mm-hmm. here's the thing. A lot of people got to understand there are parties around the world where women are just brought there to fuck the guys at the party. Mm-hmm. That's not a that's not like an abstract concept here. Yeah. Like there are parties where it's a few guys that are there, and then there are women that are just funneled into the party, and mm-hmm. their job yeah. is to fuck whoever's there. Mm-hmm. Right. That's your job. They're paid for. Mm-hmm. These girls could be Russian, they could be Brazilian, they could be American, they could be Cuban, they could be whatever the fuck they are. But they're women that do not have opportunities in life, and they're there to fuck the rich guys that are at the party. Yeah. To look at this as this only happens on Epstein Island is to be willfully ignorant to what goes on every single weekend around the world. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, every weekend around yeah, that's the world. true. Like, you go out and party in New York, they're legal. You go out and party in New York, you go to one of these nightclubs, there are women that are just paid to hang out by the bottles. Mm -hmm. They get money. They're paid. They're not supposed to fuck the people. But please believe, sometimes they get fucked. Mm -hmm. Now, it's their choice. 
But I would imagine that the girls who give up some pussy more often get paid more often to be at the party. Right. They're more fun. They get flown around. Yeah. Like, sex tourism exists. Yeah. We're completely okay with it. And we're focusing just on this, like, one specific instance because it's got all these powerful people involved. And, it's got and the, the age. The, it, what I'm saying is the age thing exists everywhere. Everywhere, okay. Yeah. yeah. Like, like you, go to, you go to... It's the, disgusting. Parts of, like, Southeast Asia and shit, like... That's yeah. the whole game. You're not going there for how old the women look. Yeah. Like the people that go to like where like And they age Thailand. the best. <laughs> and like it is, if there's one place you can fuck an old woman and she's gonna look young, it's Asia and they still want the young. You think women. it just hits closer to home because it's it's happening in our country also? Like if it's happening, just, it's, these it's, guys are pieces of shit if they're doing it in Southeast Asia. They're fucking gross, they're monsters at these parties, but it's gonna hit closer to home if it's happening in fucking Florida. Or and an I island with girls hits a, from Florida. Like a, you know, Clinton's obviously. Yeah, that animosity. Like, that absolutely, that it hits absolutely so does. So many too. different things perfect. It confirms yeah. people's idea also of like rich people. Where you're like, uh, this like cabal of people that are all connected through this pedophilic sacrifice, whatever yeah. else. Yeah. Rich yeah. people are bad. Politicians are bad. Yeah. All these rich elites, they're doing fucked up things. Yeah. I don't have that stuff because I'm not willing to do those fucked up things. Yeah. The only way you can get there is if you do fucked up things. What? The perfect story to, to convince me that I'm 100% right? That's awesome. Yeah. Now I can forget about it. Go get married. Where am I going to do my bachelor party? Fuck. <laughs> Saigon <laughs> seems like a good yeah, place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. I'm just, I don't know. Maybe I see There is hypocrisy. By. Is there something? Yeah, again, I, again, I thought you were more trying to explain away the people who went to Epstein's, Epstein Island, and no, I think they knew. But the hypocrisy I see. I guess, yeah, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, whether they knew or they didn't know, their willful ignorance is a problem. Yeah. That's uh, fair too. Yeah, I think that's a problem. Like, if you know it could. Yeah, you got to be vigilant, yo. Like, yeah. And honestly, it's probably worse if you're a powerful person because you got a lot of shit to lose. So, yeah. like, you should be more vigilant about this kind of thing. I'm curious what the pretext is also. Like, I wonder if Epstein, because he's trying to blackmail people, allegedly. That's the way I understand. Like, he's trying to get dirt on people. So, if he's bringing people down, being like, oh, yeah, like, I have some friends oh, that are that's, also that's coming to hang out. Like, they, they're all cool. Like, talk to them if you want. And then the girls are, like, super extra. Like, they're not paying for it. They're just like, wow, like, you know, Jeff's friend is, like, super nice to me. I guess she's into me. That's so cool. So, it depends on if he's trying to trap these people, which then absolves some of the people potentially of their intent. Hell yeah. Whereas some people are going like, yo, I'm going with Jeffrey Epstein. I'm about to bang a bunch of kids. Those people obviously fit into me like a different box. Yeah. I mean, think about it. If it's a trap, the last thing you want to do is incriminate somebody until afterwards. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. like if I'm trying to poison you, I don't go, hey, here's some poison in your food. Enjoy it. Yeah, you do the exact opposite. This you is the best food ever, whatever. It's so yeah. delicious. So blah, you just blah, say, blah. yo, these are my friends that just came in or they're in town and they're going to come party with us. Is that cool? Like, I know you're married, but like, they're going to come hang. Is that fine? Yeah. So I'm assuming if Epstein's trying to get these people, mm -hmm. which uh, to me, it seems like he is. Most people seem to believe that as well. Yeah. So are all the people that ever went to the island that had sex with women there? Are they all guilty of the same thing? I'm like, mm -hmm. eh, they all did the same fucked up thing. Mm -hmm. But if Epstein's trying to trap them, that's different than if they're going there on their own volition yeah, trying, to, just trying to bang kids. kids. Yeah. And now you got one of these motherfuckers that you know really likes it, and you get your hooks in. Yeah. That Prince Andrew is like, hey, I really enjoyed that specific type of party. Yeah. Are yeah. we going to have more of those? And you're like, oh, he's mine. Yeah. yeah. You keep feeding the beast, feeding the beast, and now you got him, and you can do whatever the fuck you want with him. Yeah. Yeah. That could be the game. It could be the low key. The game could have been just bait. Mm -hmm. Like he could have had above aged girls there too. I'll bring underage. everyone in, yeah. and then the people Seasons. that happen to filter into this creepy fucking pedophilic shit. Then he's like, "Oh yeah, they're mine." Yeah. Hopefully he's a rich guy. Hopefully he's connected to the royals. And I'm only yeah. inviting rich connected people. Yeah. So one of those dudes drinks a little bit, gets a little loose, yeah. starts talking to a teeny bopper, hooks in. Mm hmm. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, people that are complicit in sex tourism in general, I don't think they are completely self-actualized. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Like they're going to some third world country going like, yeah, I'm going to be involved in prostitution at the very least. Oh, self-actualizing. Yeah, like, like self-awareness. Self they're, they're going There's away to do illegal shit and they're not really yeah. thinking about it too much because it makes them feel weird. No one yeah. goes and bangs a bunch of prostitutes that are, have dubious agents and comes back like, yes. Yeah, I did it. I had a great time. Yeah, you, you, have come to, back you, you have like, to cope with it somehow. Actually, to be honest, Mark, I'm, <laughs> they do, bro. It's... <laughs> Bro, it's crazy. Oh man, we were down there. We we're taking down four, four each, something like that. Five of us. Like it's crazy that the stories they they're paying for it, but they're still like. Yeah, I, I yeah. mean, I had that joke about the strip clubs. Like anytime guys would brag about strip clubs, I'm like, 
yeah, you yeah. paid him. Like, paid I don't understand him. why you're bragging about paying for shit. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. how I feel anytime someone comes back from a trip and they're like bragging. I'm like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> and your back, money's worth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the back of my mind, I'm like, yeah, I don't you spent yeah. a lot of money <laughs> and didn't get any pussy. Yeah. Strip yeah. club wise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that has been another episode of Flagrant 2. Uh, make sure you check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash flagrant2. New episode every single Friday. Uh, go check that shit out right the fuck now. Patreon.com slash flagrant2. Join the asshole army. We will see you next week. God bless.